Hello everyone, welcome to the Lightbringers Podcast episode oh, 38. Yes, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, I wish I'd had you on sound then, just so that people could hear you sigh as well with me. But you are the people can hear you now. So if you want to repeat that sigh, that's that's yeah. <laughs> episode. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's a good strong start, Jeff. I really feel like it brought a lot of energy. It really made me just like enervated and ready to go, and very excited to talk about everything with the Jade Bot, as if you yourself were a Jade Battery. Oh wow, <laughs> that was well said. That was well said. <laughs> okay, I'll forgive you for every bad thing you've said about me in the past. Um, <laughs> it is the 38th episode of the Lightbringers podcast, and we have awesome set of guests. Look at that, boom. Prickle Patch Hollow is like ended, just as I said the episode number. Um, we did have the Jade Bot reveal guild chat stream just now. If you do want to check that out on YouTube and everything else, our reactions as we were watching, uh, mostly facial stuff, just being like, oh, wow. And also people randomly going, oh my God, and etc. Then you can watch back and listen to all the things and be excited. Um, and <laughs> make sure you do that. Everyone live on Twitch, hello. I hope you are well today. And make sure you go and check out all of people that we have today. We're gonna do a little cheeky intro. And we're gonna start actually with our brand new guest that we've never had on before. Sassy is about to be bombarded by my <laughs> randomness. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> if you wanna tell us about yourself, tell us what you do in Guild Wars 2, um, channels, stuff like that. And also a random question. If you could dress your Jade bot up in any kind of outfit, what would it be? That's the final question. That's the question that goes along with selling yourself for about my nails. It's okay, no pressure. I'm like, oh gosh. And welcome as well. It's awesome to have you here. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. And yeah, so I'm a uh, What's Sassy Cat. Call me Sassy or Cat. Most people call me Sassy. Um, I do a lot of variety on my stream, um, but I main Guild Wars 2. I've been playing since Head Start. Um, mostly Ellie, and I've dabbled in pretty much everything PvP, World vs. World. Currently, I'm big into raiding. Um, nice. I generally do raids on my channel, but I do a lot of stuff offline too. So if you ever see me in there, you can say hello. Um, how would I want it to dress up? I don't know. I feel like it would look really cute with like a big old like like feathery lion mane i don't know why it's just, it just has like that oh. little like round face those little beady eyes his little smile i think cute but like feathers instead of like a mane mane i don't know why just a little a little bit more festive <laughs> i like it i think i'm on board it. oh yeah fist, a festive <laughs> lion mane Sassy? i don't know what to call it but like, yeah. <laughs> i don't know it'd be like like a cat bird thing i don't know <laughs> Okay, cat, cat bird thing. Bird. That's okay. A char and a tengu mated, and they right <laughs> and made a bot wow. that looks like made a char a tengu baby. Robot? <laughs> <laughs> like, right. Stranger not... things have happened in Tyria. That's good. That, yeah, <laughs> things that got is... weird after the dragon magic didn't quite make it back, huh? That's <laughs> when Kroof came natural in. Natural order is just falling apart. <laughs> Good. That was good. That was solid. Oh, I like yeah. I like that choice. Please make sure you go and check out Sussy Cat's stuff because their description will be in the description as well. Below, uh, wherever, hopefully, you're listening or watching to this podcast. <clears throat> Kroof, because you apparently Hi. think robots come from biological <laughs> beings, I think it's best that you go next, clearly. They do, don't they? <laughs> I Kroof, mean... we don't have time. We'll tell you when you're older. Aww. <laughs> My parents told me about the birds and the turtles, but I think that's something else. Hi everyone, I'm Proof. I do a lot of Guild Wars 2 stuff on YouTube, and I stream here on Twitch Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And the bigger the makeup, the better the time. I also lost one of my eyelashes in the carpet, so I'm gonna probably vacuum it up at some point. But if I were to have a Jade bot, I would probably dress it up as either the Eye of Sauron or a Palantir. It's, it's got it. It's it's circular. It's round. Probably a lot of paint. Wait, on wait, wait, what did you say? A what? Sorry. <laughs> the eye of Sauron or a Palantir. You want to put the eye of Sauron on your jade bot? That'd be cool. Like the eye, eye of Sauron, <laughs> just like pushing your skiff. Okay. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. 
Look, after his I failed career as a super mega evil overlord, he's got to do something. So might as well pick up this profession, I guess. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> Is that it, Kruf? <laughs> yeah, else? I think it was pretty succinct. I'm improving. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> welcome back. Please do whatever you want with Kruf. I don't know. <laughs> like every week, it's just, I don't know what's happening. Rook. I I don't I I would say bring back some normalcy, but just carry on. <laughs> I'm with the same question. Hey hey hey. Hey, I'm bored of normalcy. It's okay. I'll make it's... it. I'll make it normal. I'll make it totally normal. You watch. for this podcast anyway. Not sure. normal. Normal's boring. I don't know what normal is. You know, I say that to my clients whenever they say normal. I'm like, I literally say to them, <laughs> "What is normal?" <laughs> because I don't know. I know, but I would like to know what your normal yeah. is, and it's like what you think normal is. So. Go, go with it, Rook. <laughs> sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Rook. I'm not sure how to follow up that discussion because we got deep for a second. But um, my normal is that if you're looking for me on the internet, <laughs> you're good, Jeb, bro. You know what? I love it. That's why I love this podcast. Um, if you're looking for me on the internet, you can find me on the floor hanging out with Chris's <laughs> other eyelash. <laughs> Thank you. Not <laughs> mid-drink. Not mid-drink. Okay, He's going to have... He's gonna have a nasal cleaning real quick. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. But if you're looking for me on the internet and not the floor next to Kroof's other eyelash, um, you can find me at Rookery, R-O-O-K-U-R-I, Twitch and YouTube now. Um, but I am a variety MMO player. I play a lot of Final Fantasy XIV and Guild Wars 2. I love them both equally. I can never answer the question of which one is my favorite because I love them for different reasons. So we play a lot of them, we talk a lot about them, and we uh, create an inclusive, diverse community that's not afraid to both be really silly and genuine and goofy and also to dive into bigger discussions and critique about games as well as on great podcasts like this. So thank you so much. Yeah, I'm Rook. You can find me at Rookery or on the floor. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Uni oh. every Friday. Wait, what was that? What happened? Someone made I didn't noise. do what I would dress. I didn't do what I would dress. Oh, do the dress first. Do the dress first. <laughs> I did tell us. I want it to just have a lampshade on. I want it to just be a floating lampshade with two little tiny arms that are like, oh! <laughs> <Just kind> of... <laughs> Wait, can we have the noise, please, again? What was the noise? <laughs> and it just like bumbles around. It's confused. I feel like someone needs to clip that, so that's the future sound effect on your channel. I don't know. Just saying. Or we can make it a sound effect on this channel. We can call it exclamation mark rook, and then we'll just literally go, <laughs> and we'll have the gif and everything. I'm surprised it would be that one. That, you know, I've I've actually this is such a strange thing to bring up, but it's true. I've done a lot of sound effects on my own of various creatures and entities because I find it funny to do various creatures and entities in Guild oh, Wars yeah. Two and try to emulate them. But I've never done the Jade Bot, and I feel like the Jade Bot's the most tame out of all of the creatures that I've done. So, if that is to be my legacy, then I embrace that. If that is to that. be my legacy, awesome. Well, I think it should be <laughs> or part of it. We'll make sure it happens. <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome everyone, indeed. Yes, I hope you're very good. We've got loads of new people in the chat as well, live as well. To, nice to see you, and I can't talk. Twitch.tv slash Jebro Unity at the moment weekly until end of Dragons releases, as well as probably after for a little bit, because I think there's still going to be a lot of excitement around the game and everything else. And also just because I think we can play the game and have a podcast as well, and sometimes that's fun. Um... What do I think? Also, come and check out what I do. Twitch.tv slash Jebra Uni. Jebra Unity on all the things. Instagram, Twitter, stuff. Um, yes, please. Thank you. Um, what was I going to say? Also, new outfit wise, I think probably... A bowler Dude. hat. Dapper! <gasps> I didn't even think about like a little bow tie or oh, yeah, yeah, and monocle and monocle and stuff. Is a bowler hat an outfit? Like if you go outside and you're just wearing a bowler hat, you'd probably be arrested. <laughs> I mean, it's a naked outfit. A, <laughs> if you are only a floating head with two little tiny arms, then I think a bowler hat is really about about as much as you have 
real estate for, you know? This is true. This is true. It is like literally covering most of its body. So. Unless it's a small one, it's to scale. Little one. <laughs> true, 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 true. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that. <laughs> Um, initial first reactions, people. Um, Sassy, I want to. I'm like, I know Sassy was really excited about the Jade Bot and whatnot. <laughs> Sassy, what did you think of like initially about like just just random first impression? It doesn't have to be anything specific about the box. We're gonna go into specifics, but what do you think about the stream? Did, did you think the stream was good? The first impressions. Let us know. Uh, yeah, I, I really liked on um, this look at this particular mastery track. So I, I'd been kind of wondering, so, you know, we got the glider with Heart of Thorns, we got mounts in Path of Fire, and I was kind of wondering, like, well, what, like, where do they go, you know, from here? And I like that they managed to find something that stands on its own, like it obviously has features that belong to just it, but then they also tied it back into the mounts or being able to get air to glide. Um, so I like that it still calls back on both of those as well. And I thought that was a really good, a good stream. Yeah. That's a very good point, actually. Yeah. yeah. Like using brand new thing, but harking back to the two older yes. features from the other <laughs> expansions. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. Good little roundup there. Well done. Kruf, <laughs> how yeah. is your roundup going to be as succinct? Never, Jebro. I was going to say, I'm not sure. If you give me a mic, I will talk. And I have a mic permanently in my bedroom, so that's not good news for anyone. But You're just I in actually... bed under the covers, just doing this at night. Hello, everyone. Yeah. How are you doing? What's going on? My brother's always just like, shut up! I'm like, wow, you're feeling a little some type of way, aren't you? But um, I totally way. agree. I totally, totally agree with Sassy Cat. I think the Jade Bots are an excellent system mm. to answer the problem areas of the other masteries without forcing players to. That was a forcing people to purchase the expansions, uh, the previous expansions, and then adding onto those masteries. It keeps people current in the current expansion, even though it's a it, getting all the expansions. It's pretty cheap. I would recommend it, uh, but. I think it's a nice way to actually go back and update older mastery systems and, you know, give it a little bit more polish and maybe even further incentivize to go back and, you know, try out these areas. What's it going to feel like, like double updrafting to a certain location or, you know, just mm. helping all around. So I really enjoyed it. And it's cute as heck. It's so cute. <laughs> you got a lot of noise going on in the background. What's going on? Are you Sorry. Like... <laughs> it's, it's I your... live by a main road and it's hot and I have a window open. Crew's giving us I that like it. fast and furious immersive experience today. The like roadway sounds, the rush of wind, the motorcycle. I'll close the window real quick. <laughs> Wait, is this, are you sure? I'm sorry. It's just really loud. I'm just like, I feel bad, but also. <laughs> Deborah's like, it is agonizingly loud and I can't stand if I get it. Heat but I do stroke, feel sorry. If I get heat stroke, I'm sending you the bill. You need to get a fan, my friend. I have a fan. AC? No. Don't you live in, like, California? <laughs> like, what the hell? No one has AC here. What? Can you get a window <laughs> AC unit? I guess that your window will still be open then, though, but... I don't like paying bills. <laughs> okay. Period. Uh, thank you very much as well for the, for the stuff. Very, very, very kind. Thank you. Legend, make sure you say thank you, please, 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 please. Um, yes. Okay, Rook. I keep forgetting where we are. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> I think I've, I've had a bit of a time this week, okay? I had a tell you the other day and my brain is just not with it. It was just like, <laughs> my, my, my blood is just like pouring out my arm and I'm just like, where am I? All right, Rook, what did you think? Random, uh, I don't know. I just saw Chris' face as well. Um, <laughs> tell us what you thought. First impressions. Woo! Jebra, you're doing great. I think Thanks. we all. I think we all. It's been a. It's been a weird. It's been a wild week. I don't. Maybe it's just me. I think it's just been a weird energy yeah, week. So we're gonna all band together in this and get through it and talk good. Um, the Jade Bot. I thought it was cool. I love it. Honestly, it's funny to me because. It feels as though when the some of the media information came out about this before the actual show that they did today, right? Yes. And some of the news outlets, I think, really did seem to understand why it would be exciting. And then other ones were like, I don't know, it's kind of underwhelming. And then I was actually looking really? at everything. Damn, yes. Okay. And then like I was looking at some of the things like the actual 
you know, possibilities and the features that were listed. And I was like, this is am amazing. What do they mean it's underwhelming? Like what has like nobody taken stock of what this little thing can do? I bet you, just, was yeah. that the play people who don't actually play the game like full time? I don't know. It seems like at least one of the outlets that I was reading about was familiar with the game, but okay. like, I don't know if, yeah, just I'm just, I'm not sure because it did seem like um, the more I found out about it and this live stream just confirms it, the more that I was going, this is actually an amazing addition. This is super cool. I love it. I love that there's customization. I love that it has its own base mastery things that it does just outside of whatever you put on it. I love that it gives jewelers something more to engage with. I love, like Kruf said, that it fills in the gaps on certain things and like helps even extend the quality of life of other masteries. I love that it is so cute and it's got the cutest little face I want to just kiss it. I love so many things about this tiny little robot um, and the fact and like I even feel as though they could have built this even more on the live stream today because the potential of using it as a photo mode is like a feature that people have been asking for in this game for years like having some kind of photo mode beyond just going into your settings and like manually having to scoot around your field of view and then mm. go back and reset it like to have something that you can use it for and actually take pictures with um i i would have loved to see them even lead with that and show even more how you could use it in that functionality because i think so many people have wanted that for so long that it could be a huge thing for the game damn all right <laughs> i mean cool I, I, I also think it's a good way to expand upon the photo mode because mm -hmm. From what we saw, it's just something you can go into first person with, but some other photo mode systems have like options where you can turn off a uh, background NPCs, player characters, spell effects. So it has a, a, a path to go down if they do want to go down a more photo mode option. But I think the groundwork is there and it's a really nice tool for like cinematography or like videos or something. Okay. Yeah. I see in chat people are saying they never showed first person on the live stream. They didn't, but I believe they it was like, or at least people were saying in chat that it had been confirmed that you can go first person in it. I don't know if I yes. just missed that. Okay. Some of the articles did mention that you can go first person mode and those were quotes from developers. So we should be able to. I also saw one that said that emotes that you like executed while in the bot, your character would do. So again, like I'm not totally sure how it all works because at least from what we saw, you had to like go up to that console and then you could enter the bot. And then, so like theoretically you would think that you wouldn't be like able to free photo shoot. I'm not sure, but like at the same time in those articles, we did get more information about how it could be used in those ways. So I'm really curious. I'm super curious. And like you said, Kruf, if they keep expanding, I mean, you could have something where if you were in that bot mode, you could apply various color filters to the game. You could have so many different things that I think would be incredible to build off of. <laughs> We've got a poll in the chat as well. Thoughts on the bot question mark. Love it, meh, hate it, or OMG, squish him cute face. Um, thank you, Reader Geek, for that. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Only one right answer. Yeah. You hate it, obviously. I mean, it sounds like, sounds like, it sounds like you hate it very much. Hate it. <laughs> Get rid of it, trash it, recycle it. Blow it up. Well, it recycles <laughs> stuff, so it can re probably recycle itself. We'll just yeah, get a new I'm one scared. and then get it to recycle the actual oh, other one. The recycle pack thing. on it and it's like recycles junk items. It just recycles itself. Yeah. Oh, that'd be my J-Bot. I'd have a, I'd have a non-functioning J-Bot. Okay. <laughs> I've called it Jabe, not Jade. Whoops. Okay, so... JPEG. JPEG. A GIF. Wait, GIF, sorry, not GIF. So the bot is cool. We like the bot. The bot looks good. And they mm -hmm. showed us that you can control the bot. And they showed, they told us that you can... Oh, actually, I didn't give you my first impressions. I'm going to give you my first impressions. Yeah, it's cool. I like it. It's good. Like, I mean, it is, I think, like, one Sasukat said as well, it's kind of harking on the old content and enhancing it that there's been, you know, added to Guild Wars 2 in the past. And then kind of bringing something new and extra. I think the interesting thing for me is as well is the jewel uh, kind of aspects as well. And just like having to be able to craft for it. And I'm wondering how much they're going to have to do it. Is it like one of those things where, you know, you craft this thing 
you know, jewelers kind of do a lot of crafting for a month and then that's it. And then everyone's got the thing done. Uh, or is this something where they're going to have to continuously add, they're going to add maybe new modules and that's going to be something jewelers are going to be able to permanently do. Or if these modules run out of charges and they just get to a point where you need a fresh one, um, like how are they going to keep that sustainable so that it's worth people doing it, if you know what I mean? I mean, they're going to do it anyway. Um, and leveling crafts is not really that difficult in Guild Wars 2. You just need money most of the time or just time. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's quite cool. I do the idea of the first person um, camera feature is really, really, really cool. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more screenshots because I do that quite a lot, uh, as we all do. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I think I think the the one mastery. There's always a throwaway mastery. <laughs> You're just like, ah, oh, that's just there because they probably couldn't think of anything else. And the, like the multi charge thing is just like you know it carries more charges. Cool. Okay, I guess like part of me is just like that's just one of those things where it's just like a built in thing. You could have just added that anyway and maybe stuck something else in. But it's just it doesn't. It is what it is. It doesn't really matter that Keeps much. Keeps people playing a little longer. Exactly. I guess. It adds an extra level and I don't think there's anything wrong with that really um, yeah and honestly I've always liked yeah. that the different masteries evolve in some way right that it feels like if you spend the time to work on them and to like rank them up that it does increase the capacity or the functionality of that thing that you're doing whether it's you know allowing you to recharge by clinging to the side of the wall on a sky scale or to have more charges of utility on something like the jade bot so I like that you can increase the cap um, and I think that a lot of the stuff that they showed for it did look really fantastic. And even as like new players continue to come into the game and they get Jade bots for the first time and they want to go through, I'm sure that there will still be a market for those. Um, I am curious to see, like you said, if there's True. some kind of consumable element to them or like if you remove one, it's destroyed and then you would have to get another one mm. or something like that to keep it going. But I did see in a couple of those articles about the bot this week that there was mention of them toying with the idea of adding modules and additional modules down the road. Um, and even on the live stream today, they mentioned, you know, right now we only have, you know, this particular feature for the core, but uh, we're thinking about other things that we could also put in down the road to have different types of cores too. So, I mean, there we go. We can we can talk we can talk about that as mm -hmm. well. We'll definitely get onto that. I think we can have some ideas for sure. Um, we can talk about let's talk about the kind of camera taking control of the bot for like hearts and stuff. I mean, I like. So Sassy, we had the the heart right at the beginning, right? And they told us that mm -hmm. we get the bot at the beginning, the kind of in the first part of the story. Do you think it's good that we get the bot kind of early? It sounds like we get the bot early, right? I think by the sounds of it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it makes sense because I mean, when you start off in Path of Fire, it's not that long before you start working on the Raptor. Um, you start working on, you know, ley line stuff pretty early on in Heart of Thorns. So it's not that strange to me. And actually, I'm one of those people that I don't like doing the hearts. That's the one thing I'm doing map completely. I'm like, oh, all these hearts again. But I like that this one at least kind of serves a purpose to teach you how to use the functionality of something. Because so many of the hearts, it's like, wake up drunk script. <laughs> I'm like, all right, how many times can I wake up all the drunk script? You know, <laughs> wake up all the drunk Norns. But I like that. This one actually is teaching people how to do something within the game that actually will benefit them throughout the rest of the game. So I like that they're kind of rethinking how those hearts might actually function. So I don't mind it being like early on and that you get something early on either. I think it, I think it's good. Yeah, good point. I'm a, bit, I'm a bit surprised that it's one of the earlier ones. I was expecting something more along the lines of fishing or skiffs being one of the first ones but they still might be i don't know like time frame when you say it's like the earlier one sometimes not might not be the first one but something you get pretty quickly yeah. but I, I kind of was expecting this to be almost end game but i guess the siege turtle probably hmm. is going to be a bit more end game mastery Wait, because... why would you want it to be end game what's starting like end end well i mean i guess it's technically end game because like we're level 80 but like yeah we're level 80. like like one of the last things that you get in the expansion to really, really? revitalize your experience in those maps but i or at least you know maybe not end but more so middle of the road but um <laughs> maybe <laughs> Give me middle or end. Which one do you want, Kruf? Okay, so um, just make up your damn mind. <laughs> point being cleared, I didn't think it was going to be one of the first ones, but I think okay. it is pretty logical that it is. 
because it just affects everything. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine the Siege Turtle will be one of the last ones that we really complete because that should be around the Jade Sea area. So I, I think that makes more sense. But just I think it's because they showed this one off the last uh, as the last one. I was like expecting it to be almost like you ha once you finish the story, then you craft your Jade Bod and it enhances your entire character. Yeah, I kind of felt that way too, as in like, especially because it was the last one revealed, it feels like it would be one of those things that would be like, this is the pinnacle of what you'd be striving for in, in End of Dragons. But the more that I kind of see it and I like compare and contrast it to others, it does seem like it's going to be used so much in the way you interface with areas and places. And not that it seems as though it's mandatory to be able to play, you know, End of Dragons, but in the way that like, you can tell that probably a lot of the functions and features and stuff on the maps were sort of designed with this in mind. And so having these different like areas and places and batteries and like ways that it might be convenient to you does feel like something that kind of like gliding in like Heart of Thorns, you would take your own journey with to then by the end feel like, oh yeah, now I can really, really do everything within the world and I can engage with it and um, I can really enjoy it by the time you get there. So that things like skiffs or fishing might be more of a, and now what do you do? Well, you kick back and you fish with your friends. So like, I can kind of see why they're doing it that way, but I was kind of surprised too. <laughs> can we get that random? I've not heard that voice before. Sorry. Can you? Can I hear that again? Is that something I, don't know. I can was hear it, again? Was it like this? This is my fisherman. It's like that. My just fisherman. Just, <laughs> fish just gonna go fishing and make your skiff go fast. It's like kind that? of like a know. southern. Was yeah, it was kind of like a southern like tinge I, or Look, something to it. The voices they just work through me. I don't. I just go wonderful. with it. It's very good. Yes, <laughs> I'm. I'm massively approving of uh, of the the fisherman voice. I don't know. Um, yes. <laughs> What was I saying? What were we even talking about just then? I just completely lost the plot. I've completely lost the plot today. I swear it's this Shame. week. I'm just, I'm just completely out there in terms of my life. Um, in general, yes, exactly. The heart, the beginning. I think it's a good thing that you have it in the beginning because of many reasons that you've all said. And just like, it's good to have this experience with it, right? Like you get the Jade Bot at the beginning, you grow with it, it's your friend. You can only pretty much use it, I guess, or get the charges in that in those areas anyway, as far as we know. Um, and we can talk about that in a bit as well. And I think it's nice. I think one thing, I think things that I would like to see um, is it to be like the engineer's bot in terms of programming it and how it works. So if you program certain traits on the engineer bot, uh, the new elite specialization it changes look like so it's got different arms it's got different um, core body and head and whatever and i think depending on what core you've got in the jade bot or depending on what level it is like i mean in the masteries it would be nice to see this tiny addition i know that in terms of masteries though you can't re change the look back so having a massively distinct different look wouldn't makes sense in terms of production time but like even just like a little tiny thing which is just added to it when the master is like you you know when this thing levels up i hope it's a moment i want that to be a moment i want that to be a thing that was like you know level up and this thing just flies in and it's just got this like some plating comes onto it or something and it's just like you know it'd be pretty cool i pro i don't think that's gonna happen but it would be it would i was be gonna nice. be like you get that with engineer what 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 do you like mean? that whole like system, <laughs> like leveling it up, having different. Oh, the jade bot. Anyway. No, but you said like I wanted to be like engineer. Oh no no no! Anyway. I mean, I wanted wanted to be like. Did I? Did I just? You just made up something, <laughs> Kofi. Jebra, I mean, I <laughs> honestly get transported. Chat, do you? At this point, I don't know if Kruf misheard or Jebra literally cannot remember what he has said two seconds ago. Because really, it is a toss-up. It is anybody's <laughs> game as to which one it is. <laughs> and that's who was listening. <laughs> who was listening? I don't know where I am right now. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for the. J <laughs> There's not a lot to talk about with the J bot today, but there is. There is. Well, there is and there isn't. Okay, so let's go and talk about. Da, 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 da. Yes. So first person camera. It looks like you can like kind of control the bots up and down movements for arrows on your. 
abilities, whatever. And then there was an arrow to the right, and I didn't get what that did. Did anyone catch that? There was like an up and down. It was, and right. um, action cam was one of them. It was to okay, control it in and out of action cam. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I saw it, they like briefly went over and I was like, action cam, I see it. Oh. I don't know why. <laughs> wouldn't, uh, I guess it's because like a lot of people might not have action camera bound because it's not by default bound to anything. So no. probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's great. That's great. I like this is one of the big questions that I have coming out of it. I am curious about like that photo component and we can probably talk about this more later, but um to have it right there does seem as though they are acknowledging the fact that it it being a screenshot tool would be something of importance, right? So mm -hmm. I'm like if you can go in and out of it and take beautiful shots, um, that would be fantastic, even if right now it's only in limited areas, because it did seem like the impression I got was that you had to go interact with that terminal to enter the bot, right? So you can't just like freely choose to enter it anywhere in the world anytime you want. That would no. suck if that's the truth. <laughs> I would not, not <laughs> suck in the worst, but I'm, I mean, actually, no, yeah. It, actually, I'm going to say it. That should be a thing. It should be a thing. It should be, yeah. shouldn't it? Like, I don't care, actually. I don't care. I'm going to say it. You should be able to go into the damn bot whenever you damn well please. And I think it. Well, I think Jebro. if you're going to do it, what, you just got to go for you it. You can't. But why, <laughs> Chris? Why? You can't because the developers I... did not set it up like that. Well, I agree with you, though, Jeb. True. Like, <laughs> I'm sure... I, like, I'm sure there are probably concerns about, again, like they were talking about today, where they didn't want yeah. like the maps to be flooded or like the pressure or issues that could happen on a server. Like uh... I, as a non-developer, I don't know like what would happen if you were trying to do tequila and then everybody decided to go into their first person action bot view to take pictures of tequila. I don't know if the game would just explode. Tequila. I don't know. I like, was going to say, are you talking about the dragon? Do you mean yeah, Are you talking about the boss? Are you saying tequila? Okay. Yeah, said tequila? <laughs> tequila, sorry. Hold up a minute. Are you telling me that none of you call tequila tequila? No, but no. I am. But I like it. I love it. My entire community has called Tequaddle tequila since I literally started playing the game. I learned it from them. Okay, so well, that's not a thing. That's not People a thing. People don't call it that. <laughs> it's not a thing. doing shots and taking selfies. <laughs> wow. I, I would call it geek <laughs> because someone had misspelled it. But I, I think... I think I've everyone has their own names you. for Tequaddle. I mean, I've, I've never heard it, tequila. I think like, you've been taken advantage of. <laughs> I I'm, have I'm been lied to from the get-go. What is my life anymore? Um, tequila, tequila sunrise. That's what I've always called them. <laughs> tequila. <laughs> but anyway. And uh, like, uh, that's John Cena. I don't know how that would, like, to be fair, I don't <laughs> I don't know how that would affect things. Like maybe you could put some kind of restriction in to where like you can't use that kind of first person mode when you're in combat. And if you get in combat or like combat starts happening, you get booted out of it. Like maybe you could do something as well where like the player themselves operates as the terminal in a sense. And there is a range around them where like you can only go so far in the bot before things explode or like, you know, you, I guess not, you don't have to explode. It doesn't have to be that dramatic before you get booted and you have to go back to yourself. Like, I think there are ways to do this. And I really hope that in the future, they maybe do expand it because the potential there again, for this to be a massive se like selling feature to literally have a functionality worldwide for you to have a photo mode is like so huge for this game, as well as the like social media engagement and promotion of this game, because people take screenshots, they post them, they share them. People are like, what game is that? Like, I see this time and time and time again in MMO communities. Well, we you see that... make other game, main game you play as well, Final Fantasy, right? I mean, that's massive there, that, ca that camera feature. Yeah, I mean, we literally have people that just do straight up photography in 14, you know what I mean? Um, so it's something where like, again, if you facilitate that, you are showing off all the features of your game in a way that you don't even realize that you're doing. So I do hope they, f they change that because right now it looks like you can go first person, you can do action camera, you can fly it around, you can do that stuff, but only when you're at those terminals. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I paid attention to that because maybe I didn't want to think that's what was the actual case. <laughs> it makes me think like, I mean, those areas have obviously got like 
tech sorted and they know that they've made these areas really nice to look at probably <laughs> and it's cool that you're going to be able to get to these areas and take some screenshots in the way and i'm, I'm kind of hoping that there's going to be a really clear blue scr screen behind people or like green or something so you can actually kind of do some green screen stuff and put stuff behind it you, you do more you want to put behind it on photoshop or whatever um just just install hmm. reshade that has a green screen filter. It does, yeah. Oh, it does. I've never actually used yeah. it. Yeah. I've never actually used it. I've just used the game. It can be cool. I think a good middle that. ground would be to have a merchant where you can buy terminals and place them down wherever you want in the world temporarily. Uh, but mm. I think a more permanent one would be rather nice, especially for guild halls or like player housing areas. Uh, but they've had tables you can drop in ice food saga like the way station stuff so maybe we'll see some jade terminals or jade batteries be able to be placed in like Corteria. be a good way to like earn money jewelers can make yeah. it as well that's true Julia, yeah you can yeah. sell it take like when they came out, I thought it might have been gliding and maybe also mounts. Didn't it take them a little bit to implement it back into yes. core tier as well? Oh, yeah. Just figuring out how to work. So maybe that's something that'll come down the line. I hope so too. I mean, same thing, like be nice to be able to take photos anywhere across any of the maps. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Could be. I mean, it depends as well how spread out these are and what are the ranges that you can take this bot to i guess in maps specifically it is going to be yeah hmm. that's kind of the main feature i enjoy actually i guess of this bot i think that's probably <laughs> the one thing i'm like yeah that's actually gonna be awesome i mean it's cool it is cool like it adds like a lot of you know some passive stuff to your character which is going to help you i feel like you know it's got this Recycle. Oh, I'm going to go through the thingy rather than uh, I'm trying to give it a little bit of structure. It also helps me when I chapter these things rather than making up funny names for each chapter, which I kind of did on the last episode. If you want to go watch that. <laughs> now, I do see something very interesting in chat and we'd have to confirm this, but Obi yes. says that it is mentioned that one of the recipes that they showed at the merchant was to make one of those stations. Oh, so I know. Okay. It could be that that's already implemented, and Kruf, you were like 100% on the money with that one. <laughs> and like, that's the way that they decided to like retroactively implement it currently for the rest of the game that you can create those almost like you would put down a feast of food or buff banners or stuff like that in the world, and then you could use them for X amount of time or, you know, whatever you were doing. I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> you are just on it with these predictions. <laughs> I know. I think I'm a prophet. For the low price of $100 every 30 <laughs> minutes, you can get your future read for me. You need to show up next week with glint makeup on. <laughs> to be oh, real good. That would be real. I don't think, don't think it would show up on camera. I'd just be translucent. <laughs> I that can be a look. To do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can be a look. Yeah, I'm definitely, yeah. Kreef can do that. So that would be, I think that would be, that would make all of the issues not an issue at all. Yeah, if they have that, I think that would be great. Completely. I mean, because honestly, it looks great as it is. It was even so fun just watching the bot fly around with its little helicopter spinny. It's so happy to be alive. And it's just little the dance. little boy, it's little dance. Oh. And like, yeah. <laughs> to be able to even now use it at all in those capacities uh, is really great, even in limited locations, because we don't have any capacities to use anything like that as it is. Um, and I honestly did like a lot of the buffs they showed. I, I think I'm excited about them. Not only because, yes, I'm terrible at inventory management, so having one that is an inventory management module, that will be a big help to me and my continued existence. Um, it's just but... junk, Rook. It's not a miracle worker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I can't do it. <laughs> Every single thing helps. Um, yes. It does. It's true. I, I get that. <laughs> But those modules are actually really exciting for, for the future. I know the, mm -hmm. the core one is only Vitality currently, but they could do other stats. And this expansion has been so heavily on Vitality modifiers, which will definitely be really nice for newer players who might, you know, have a little bit of a learning curve with the combat or if someone is just struggling, like Elementalists. It does depend on the class as well. So that's uh, pretty cool to see. Oh, there's a nap. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's pretty cool to see. But hopefully in the future we'll get other things like concentration or like expertise, some things to kind of diversify more than just vitality. Uh, but the other ones that you'd mentioned, like the junk item ones, uh, those are pretty good too. I think I saw a karma one and I'm like, mm, that would why sense. karma? Why karma though? Unless there's a large karma sink in End of Dragons, which I would be very much in support of because I have millions of karma. So I need to use something. I need to use it somehow. I mean, possibly. I mean, think, remember, not everyone is a, an, an older player as well, like a vet player. Like karma for like people but coming in. Karma, it hasn't really been used too frequently. And they didn't introduce it in Path of Fire, so maybe there are systems where karma True. will be more uh, valuable. Not, of course, new players, it'll be nice to catch up and get more karma, but I'm just wondering if you're not going to implement systems that require karma, why have it at all? So I'm kind of interested to see if we get some more karma currency play. I'm trying to get the video up in the background right now so we can see some things. There we go. Okay, the YouTube one's up. Twitch is so rubbish at showing off, like, <laughs> flipping past video stuff, I swear, man. Um, okay, why is it? Maybe it's just me. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I'm completely losing the plot to that. <laughs> I'm completely losing the plot. I'm just trying to find the bits and bobs in the video. If anyone does find that, I really want to find that recipe. I really want to find that recipe. Rafaga says 4305. 4305, 4305 in the video. 5. Okay. Yeah. And it is not oh. a recipe, but the workbench for six gold and 300 of the special currency. But we are unclear on what specifically it does. <laughs> so, but it was there. It was there. That's a decent price too. Six gold. So it can be something that people actually work towards. Maybe gold and other currencies will be more valuable this expansion. Keep people playing longer. That's it. Exactly. I mean, I'm just, uh, the bench is very, very awesome as well. Just the look of it and stuff. Mm -hmm. Wondering if they, so they've got to add these to like core. They've got to add it to like yeah. Lion's Arch and stuff, I guess. Right? Maybe? Or maybe they won't. They could. Maybe they won't actually. I can see these being used a lot too. And like when people do the fashion shows, fashion contests, like guild, like shots of your whole True. guild. Because right now you need one person to either zoom all the way out and you get who knows. What, like you get to center yourself just right. And if you're short of Sura, like everything's down low and you're looking like all the way up. So I think, you know, if this works the way that we're kind of thinking that it works, that, you know, it'd be a big game changer for, you know, guilds who want to take group photos or just groups with your friends. Um, you know, yeah, I, I can really see it used in fashion contests, too. Oh yeah, be massive. Like being able to go into that first person mode and kind of fly around them instead of, you know, you have all these characters just running around trying to show them off, like especially when people do stream, but um, even within guilds and stuff, being able to like take those screenshots of people's, uh, people's like really, really wonderful like fashion that they have out there. There's some really great, <laughs> great stuff. Very it'd be nice to be able to get some good pictures. Yeah. yeah, and people want to commemorate what they've done in the game and the times and the memories mm -hmm. that they have, you know? Um, and although that's just the workbench that's in there as opposed to, like, the, the terminal or things like that that we saw, I think it is indicative that they could have thought about this, <laughs> right? And it's also kind of strange, too, because as we were talking about during the live stream, the idea that, um, you know, these Jade Bots have this functionality and they were even saying, you know, hey, while you're in Cantha, don't worry, we're not going to make you have to, like, haul all the way across the map to recharge and come back. But as of right now, we don't really know for any of the other core maps if you're using those functionalities or any of the other expansions, right? Um, and then you run out of batteries. Do you have to boogie your Sabba all the way back to Cantha to find a map with a battery? Or is there going to be something like these, like, you know, purchasable terminals or some kind of item that you could use to facilitate that? Or like you were saying, Sassy Cow, at some point, are they going to retroactively go back in and like add terminals throughout everywhere? They had a really interesting little mention during the actual broadcast about, um, you know, thus far, the rest of Tyria has never been introduced to this technology, but think about what the rest of the world could do with it. I like to envision like the Char and what they might do with holograms or like the Asura, blah, 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 blah. And so at the time, Kruf was like, mm, maybe a return to Tyria <laughs> expansion, but 
it to me does seem like they are at least thinking about the ways that this technology can be implemented more in the entire game, right? Um, so what we start with already is so robust. There's so much with this little bot. It's ridiculous. And I think it is such a clever move to bring this into the game. It's, it is so much more than you think it is at first glance, which is awesome. Well, uh, ArenaNet Ben P, who just resubscribed, <laughs> is the one who is just on the, sh on the show. So maybe we can ask Ben in the chat <laughs> right now about a question that we answers. have. <laughs> and maybe he can answer. Ben's uh, like, oh, I suddenly have a very important thing I have to go to. Oh, uh, I have a meeting. Oh. <laughs> Uh, no, Ben. You want to take screenshots at Tequila? Ben, <laughs> Ben's tequila. pretty forthcoming with information. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, Tequila. Oh, good lord. Yeah, screenshots at Tequila. <laughs> um, so, Ben, and you don't have to answer if you're not allowed to. Um, it, so, we're, what we're wondering is about, and anyone can add on to this as well if, if they want to, we can ask another question or whatever, but we were wondering about the screenshotting and being inside the bot basically if it's limited to being around a station specifically um like that's a hundred percent thing and basically mostly in the expansion and if you can craft the i can't remember what the stations were called the the stations Terminal? so the terminals maybe yeah um where you can craft them and put them down anywhere in the world and take screenshots as well that's kind of something we're confused about because you can see there was a recipe for building a workbench but i don't think that's the same thing as the the actual terminal where you can access and use your bot to take screenshots so i guess the question you need the terminals which are only in those limited locations right now okay there you go so you can't craft the bench you can craft the bench Oh, right, okay. The workbench was for changing modules. right now. That implies... For now. Yeah. That yes. implies... So maybe we'll right get now. the... <laughs> Ease the pressure off. They're about to release an expansion, Jebra. No, no, no. I'm asking a question. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I wasn't critical. I was just asking... Hey, I'm doing my... Wow, I'm a host of podcast, all right? And news and stuff. This is my job. Okay? Given the heart... Ain't it, Ben? Ben, we're, we're friends. Me and Ben, we go way back. Way back, aren't we, Ben? That's true. I did have a question, which I don't know if it was answered on stream or not, or if my brain shut off, as it seems to be doing throughout this day. But uh, the mastery system is an account-bound system, as we know, but the, the Jade bots themselves seemed to be character-bound. So I had a question as to, uh, based on each character, can multiple characters have different module setups for that specific character. I don't know if I caught one of that or if anyone else did. Uh, just a question. If that is able to be answered, I don't know. That would be interesting if there was like a loadout system like your your characters have already. You know, like the um, equipment you, when you just press one tab and like you literally everything changes. Imagine like having that tab for the bot. That would actually be cool. Ooh, okay, that is a good answer. I'm very excited about this answer. The j yes. equipment is character bound. So yeah, you can have a different yeah. set of modules for each character. Thank you so Thanks. much. That was, that was a big question on my mind because mm. I was like, what if one character I want to have it be like the mount farmer or like the <laughs> junk farmer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That helps you tailor what you would want to use it for as opposed to having to constantly go back and change it and shift mm -hmm. it and move it around. I love that. Uh, ben had also added on, we'd like to make the direct control mode more available, but we want to see how it goes first, which, yeah, makes total sense. Yeah, it's important, because especially because that is an entity in the world, because that's the only time, as they've said, that it's a skill effect more than anything. It's not an entity in the world, which makes sense, you know, and I'd rather have it like that. So it's not like, I mean, actually, I'm thinking about scrapper bots above the head i don't think that's an entity i think that's just a skill effect which is permanent like maybe like the aegis kind of shield you see when people have aegis on i guess that's kind of similar to that but um yeah now that just comes in and the animation the animation is nice which means they can do more with those animations i think a lot of the time and you don't I, I mean you know scrapper having the bot out as a scrapper like little tiny bot that's you know it, it's quite cool but i don't think i'd want many more things to kind of yeah, I, had a, I was kind of curious about that 
in world versus world because i know it's like a huge thing that you're always being told by every commander like hide your minis hide your minis because minis don't get the stealth so i'm curious if these bots because you did say that the um like the ability to scavenge or to you know break down the junk into something more useful is that something where the bots just passively doing that and the bots hidden because i i could just see like commanders being like put away your bot put away your <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah, yeah, we could have been on that. I mean, that's actually a good question. Another question we had, like, we were thinking about is, like, if these modules run out. I mean, I don't know if Ben said I anything. I think they do. But, like, it I mean... It doesn't seem like it. Yeah, I don't think I so, think... but it might be worth, like, Ben, if you can tell us. If, is it, like, you, you have... <laughs> tell us, please. <laughs> like, if you have... I mean, he's here. He doesn't care. He does this all the time. He's here. This is why Ben's on, on the Twitches, I'm pretty sure. Um, but, like, if you make a module... Maybe I should just get him in the call. Um, <laughs> if we get and make the module... Um, <laughs> And stuff like that is it like does it always just work forever and you've got it or is it that you have to recraft it or it's got charges or is there any other reason that you would need to ever replace one if it's like at the maximum level i guess that's my kind of worry or wonder for like jewelers because i would like to see some kind of permanency like they're for permanent. people to always need something huh they're permanent they're permanent, are permanent. <laughs> well he said it oh okay i was still yeah, going yeah, yeah. But Ben also God. said the recycler is passive. You get a little message in your chat log. The scavenger responds and scans the corpse. I would assume, though, that... That's cool. I want to see that animation. Or is that dark? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Is that a bit dark? I wanted to see an animation of a dead corpse being scanned. I don't think so. I mean... That would be kind of cool. Like, for a necromancer, it's like, well, I can't resurrect your body right now because it's not Guild Wars 1, <laughs> but I'll go throw a bot at you and just be like, Brr, died of hemorrhage. <laughs> like here's a, this is a very important question um will the bot send me adorable little daily messages that show up in my mailbox oh about my it, um increasing journey to sentiency and being my best friend because that's <sighs> pretty crucial to me from like an immersion standpoint that i, I need, to, <laughs> need to just like know how the good boy's doing and just like feel a part of it okay there is some interesting recipes here as well. It's very interesting. Yes. I'm sure Ben's going to answer mm -hmm. the question very shortly. But this, is there any questions about, I have some questions maybe about what this means. There's like, there's a scavenger protocol yeah. mite trophies. Mite trophies? Yeah, this is mite trophies. I don't know what the hell a mite trophy is. I mean, is uh, it Maybe like... a new special collection? Oh, the stuff for Gift of Might. Gift of Might. Oh, it's literally Gift some of Gift of Might. Oh, that's pretty cool. Is it? Is that? Wait. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> oh. So legendary. Oh, God, I'm so excited right now. Light bulb. Kruf, just, Kruf just took me on a sound audio journey. It was amazing. That I'm gasp, just... it had like multiple parts. I am in the throes of dealing with legendary crafting pain and having to just rely on like the chance of getting a tier five or a tier six mat. Oh, hurts. So this is really interesting if uh, we have like an increased chance of getting these certain crafting materials or just something a little bit more consistent. Sure. So, and you, I mean, you have to, for legendary armor, it costs 600 tier six materials. Which is extremely expensive. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, but I think this is a really cool system. And like, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm super excited to see how it will be expanded upon in the future. For sure. Um, we did have one question. I had one question myself. Uh, with the batteries to recharge, right now they're all located in Cantha, much like those terminals. Are there? Is it going to be something that's added to the rest of the open world? Or is there something that you could even put in like a guild hall? Or will, at least for now, we'll be returning back to like have to charge them in Cantha specifically? You know, not like any of us aren't going to be hanging out in Cantha for the release for a while, but <laughs> just curious about that. Awesome. I'm still grinding out Path of Fire meta events. I'm not going to go to Cantha at all. All right. Yeah. All right. Steady on. <laughs> okay, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to get that forged, forged by fire meta event. Yeah. I actually I do. do I one. actually haven't got all the masteries completely filled yet because there, there is <gasps> not that many mastery points, actually. Jebro. Fake Dan. 
I've got like seven to get. They're difficult, man. Like, Jesus, there's so many. <laughs> there's, there's not that many. There, you have to play the game a lot. I don't have that time right now. <laughs> okay, well, it's just mainly because I have to play specific things a lot. Anyway, but there's loads of... I want to see some more of these tabs, actually. I'm just wondering... Because there's a lot on there. There's like the... There's wood, metal, leather, cloth. You can enhance the rescue uh, protocol. I guess reduce recharge for that. Karma, like someone else says, Turtle Siege en Enhancer, which is one of the modules for the bot as well that we, s we saw. And it was like... What is it? it improves the cannons, right? The blast radius, something like that. Um, oh man, why why is YouTube so? so it much? makes the turtles heckin' fast. It's just like <laughs> zoom. Right. Also, Ben did answer. Uh, we'll have to see. Kantha has been closed off to the world for a long time. With opening up contact, maybe some jade tech will show up in other parts of Tyria someday. There's hints there. There's hints. An important question, which really geek reminded me of and just DM'd me, was skins for bots is that anything you can talk about ben is can you talk about <laughs> skins for bots like if that's because i know they're not permanent Real things that is that isn't that is a problem because they're not permanent this is true because they do seem to be a bit more temporary yeah you can't like just well but i mean like any time it would be nice oh, wait, but wait it says i can't talk about skins at this time well yeah. okay <laughs> Speculation running rampant. Well, right. but I mean, honestly, we have skins for everything from like harvesting tools to you know what I mean. So That's I feel like it's not off the table. That is true. Okay, well, that's no. a good answer. Uh, <laughs> we'll go with that. The skip supercharger, everything else. Just having a look through some of these modules as they kind of click through. I mean, I don't understand why you would ever want to change that sweet little angel bot's face because it's the cutest little. I don't even know. It reminds me of a turtle in and of itself. Like the eyeballs, they yeah. remind me of like, like a, a turtle. I could see that. Yeah, that's true. I want, I want an eyeball. I want an eyeball <laughs> with like a retina, like almost like a blood fiend type thing. I want an I'm eyeball, a charatingu baby. And... <laughs> <laughs> or the eye of Sauron, a plant. I think I'm just delivering yeah, the eye of Sauron. <laughs> you've, really you've got your on eye makeup eyeball. on today. I mean, you've, you've got I tried the... to emulate the jade bot, like kind of roundish <laughs> eye. You got the eyelash <laughs> in your eye as well. I did. I lost yeah. an eyelash. It's somewhere. Yeah. having a rough day. It's been a rough day. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> true. I mean, I would love to see something even like the different legendary creatures from Cantha. I don't know. There's just so many good thematic things that you could do. Little <laughs> mini. Little mini elder dragons. They'd be so Aww. cute. <laughs> Can we talk about something else that's really exciting? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll go for about. it. Pop it. Pop it out there. <laughs> my birthday is in April. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> oh my personal... god, that's, that's not really related to Guild Wars Two, the podcast, <laughs> no, 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 or no. anything other than just <laughs> you. And the fact that it is your birthday. In Should April. we talk about something uh, so exciting? <laughs> my birthday is in June. So uh, no, uh, I was. I'm say having the... chicken nuggets for dinner. I don't care. <laughs> this is personal... amazing. With mashed potato gravy. Some I really should just not. Really. Hey, live your best life. I know, that's what <laughs> I'm saying. That's what I'm the saying. The personal waypoint use. Oh, yeah! yeah I think, yeah, yeah. yeah, that one is huge. I think that's actually one of the best things. I think that's yes. actually yes. legitimately one of the best things. Is it the I mean, trailer? that. That and the updraft. I honestly think, like, although updraft on demand maybe doesn't seem right off the bat as huge, like, just the thought of the amount of times that I have been out doing stuff and I'm like mid glide or I'm just, I'm like half an inch short. I'm like, please just let me up there. I used all my things <laughs> to have that on command, especially on a few of the maps that have a lot Rookie's of that intensive outing themselves now as a poor glider <laughs> slash mound person. And I'm just like, <laughs> damn. Um, I don't I mean, believe I said anything about the quality of my use of gliding and mounts, just that sometimes <laughs> I've used all my other abilities in my kit, probably because I am doing so much exploration mm -hmm. and I just need a little something extra. So I love okay. the idea of that even, oh wait, you can't use it in raids. I was going to say even in those moments where you accidentally miss glide or you're going to plummet to your death around Gorsum. <laughs> you can't use it. I was going to say, yeah, you like can't that. use it in Gorsum, <laughs> yeah. Well, well actually, yeah. maybe, wait, can you use it there? No. no, I think they explicitly yeah. said it's only, around. yes, yeah. so, which is good. That's honestly good. But like that- No one does that mechanic feature. anyway. <laughs> I just feel like you should just use it. Like, I just feel like you should be able to anyway, just because it's fun. Uh. <laughs> um, when you miss but, the gliding in Sarah. 
Five days. <gasps> <laughs> oh, you glide too All early. All the time. You know what? I should have gone uh, straight to Zira as an example because that was my biggest pet peeve about that fight. I would just lose it when I was like, my face yeah. was just rubbed, like going down the side of the rock as I stared at my own yeah. event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. Oh my gosh. Uh, no, but I mean, I honestly think that'll have great utility. And the waypoints, be it for jump puzzles like they talked about in the stream today, or just for meeting up with people, group exploration, going back to something... Oh my gosh, this is going to be so helpful. I'm so Mesmers happy. Mesmers are out of business. They're out of, well, not entirely. I think they so. Have I been, think they you've... have been diminished we need in to the go, necessity. We need to go and have a look because I think there's a certain amount of charges. I don't think this is something you can just always have out and it's always a no, waypoint. Yes, yes, like, yes. It looks yeah. like it's going to, because this, this, I think it's that as well, because judging by the trailer here, and we need to go back and have a look, but judging by this, it looks like the actual bot goes into the waypoint and it is technically not with you if you use it as a waypoint. So it's n it looks like you've got a choice. You can either use it as a waypoint and it's not going to do the things as you're going around. So it looks like you won't, it won't be scanning bodies and it looks like, <laughs> I like how I went there first. It won't be scanning corpses <laughs> for like extra loot and it won't be doing this extra stuff because it's doing the waypoint specifically. It might be yeah, nice to get a little bit of confirmation from the amazing Ben P in chat, but like, I'll just say, because it makes sense, right? Like, because then you're, I was gonna say risk and reward, but it's more, you know, it's not that big. But like, if you have it as this convenience, then you're not gonna have it convenient somewhere else to do the different things. So it really depends what you wanna do. Um, I think I I'd rather have I it. I mean, if it's, if it's not there. That could just be, it's magic. <laughs> I, I love, I love the way you real just like, <laughs> here's the way you deal with your problems and your issues and everything else. It's fixed with magic. <laughs> I just could magic. really fill out, I could fill out the rose, <laughs> rose garden magic. with that one liner. Hardy har har. I mean, let's be real. Sometimes in a fantasy world, you do just hit the point where you're like, magic. It's just magic, yeah. that one. I'm not gonna come up with Midichlorian <laughs> yeah. here. It's just that magic. That is true. There is, there is, there is definitely things in life for sure that. I mean, I honestly think it would be a pretty good trade-off if you, you know, had to set it somewhere for something like the waypoints, especially because as they were kind of talking, they were saying, it seems like, right, like you were saying with the charges and things that we have, that it's not like this is something you can just spam, like nonstop, willy-nilly. So it feels like choosing to do that wouldn't be like I would not be upset if that was the case. You know, like, oh look in a little yeah. dance again. He's Did little, you see? I'm just it's rewinding it. But like, what? How do you do that? Like, what are they just hanging out in the maps and dancing around and stuff? Or do you, does, is yours going to be able to dance? Or is that you dancing with a cat in that area where you can access it? I think it's that. I think it's that because the the bot doesn't stay out with you the whole time. Like they they yeah, really think each other that. So well, that shot like, could have been like an ambient. It could be an ambient Jade one. bot yeah. that we see sometimes. But I, I think I missed how they deploy the the waypoint system. We can go back like, to how it. Do we'll you, find it. How do you go? Because it seems like you have to interact with something or... Mm, let me see if I can find it on the video. My whole memory just like... I, pr I was watching it and my brain decided not to encode it into long-term or relatively short-term memory either. That's short what happens when, when we do this. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It's, it's like I... normally when I'm watching it, it's really, I'm really like focused on it. And then most of the time yeah. I'm just watching your faces while I'm watching this to see what you're reacting to. And then it's a bit like what we talk about. And then, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work unfortunately very well sometimes, but it's, it's still cool because we can, we can go always go back and it's only a short stream. Um, let's see if we can find it. I think it'd be interesting if there were only certain points for the waypoint as well. There are certain areas. I wonder if you can use this in quartz area then as a waypoint. You must be able to. No? I mean, it's a core mastery, yeah. so I imagine you would be able to. Yeah. Oh, Ben says you have access to all the other abilities and when a waypoint is up. So you're good to you go. Got your answer. It's magic. Why, Ben? Is that magic? magic. Is that, is it's that magical Chris convenience? Reason? You but you saying... only get one waypoint, so there you yeah. go. The jade True. bot flies up <laughs> into the jade waypoint and it kind of diffuses and then it uh, forms again to eat the stuff. Or right. you just throw all your junk into the waypoint and it 
churns it up. It's like a washing machine. It goes and it spits it out. Spits out gift of might. <laughs> I mean, hey, they have microwaves now. They can invent a washing machine. What I believe. I believe. <laughs> like... Groups coming up with other theoretical uses for the jade bot that have nothing to do with functionality. Oh, it has okay. to be in lore. I'm thinking of a lore reason why you can still use your jade bot while it's in the waypoint or if it's even in the waypoint. <laughs> Ben oh. says he's not actually flying into the waypoint. I uh, think we might have edited that animation since it was filmed, so it doesn't look like it's flying directly into it. Interesting. Okay, that's good information. So false right. advertising. Oh. It is false <laughs> advertising because I was wrong, <laughs> but it was a question and it's a good question. How dare you? <laughs> and it got an answer, and that's good. All right, they're talking about. I like the magic reasoning though. I have a question. In some of the media tour stuff, there was discussion about the fact that it's rumored that you can even use some of these bots for like small puzzles or that there may be areas to explore on maps that are like too small for you or your mounts to get in through, but that there may be a nearby terminal where you could access it and fly in. Is that is that something we're actually going to be able to find in Kantha and that we should keep an eye out for? Because I actually am really excited about that and I like that idea. <laughs> Ben, no comments! No! Okay. <laughs> oh, did you say no comment? Oh, nice. Oh, there you go. Contra. <laughs> it means that you, you know, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean no, though. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to find the flipping <laughs> waypoint thing bit. Good lord. It looks like just generally the area and actually recharging a battery and stuff. I like how they're trying to help people to learn how to use the jade bot as well and in, in hearts and stuff i do like that oh no it's energy efficiency it's not that one i really like the art at the top with the cute little bot oh yeah, yeah. the art yeah. on all these is really really nice too it's almost as if guild wars 2 has had incredible artistic direction from the get-go back to guild wars 1 it's i think this is one of the first times they actually open up the end of dragon's mastery tab because typically they were just like photos of it so now we actually see the placement of all of them and that arbor stone mastery oh, yeah. i'm still very interested in and confused by <laughs> it's revitalization <laughs> right yeah so it yeah. just feels like i have the north just like but i have the north vendor almost but yes. in a mastery right that's probably what it is mm -hmm. which isn't as exciting as the others <laughs> but yeah. you know i mean it, it, it is it's much think... easier to upgrade it rather than yeah. having to spend a bunch of currency and gold to upgrade the eye of the north so i don't think everything has to be as well and, and that's just probably my own taste i don't think everything has to be like wow everything doesn't have to be like wow this no. is amazing all the time because if, you, if everything is just like wow this is amazing then how are you gonna base anything off of anything else everything's just gonna be like <laughs> this is kind of okay but this is amazing you know, if it's all this is amazing, you've just got an amazing level. You can't really go above that, can you, Kroof? Although I'm probably sure that you could invent something like magic. Yeah, I'll get on that. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Yeah, this is the animation. Anyway, so Jade Tech, your Jade Bot now has the ability to set personal waypoint for you. You can cr now craft tier five and tier six power cores. All right, so you do actually have to master level the mastery to be able to craft them as well. So that's pretty cool. So it goes hand in hand with that. That's good. Here we go, here's the animation. It's a pretty cool animation. It's a bit... How do they activate it? Oh, that's true. Like, how did they activate that? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't remember anything like opening up a magic. tab. Magic. <laughs> hey. It's that magic again. It must be a keybind. It must be a keybind. An another keybind? No, 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 Maybe. this is the waypoint. This isn't the rest. <laughs> Out of keys. <laughs> This is the waypoint. Like we're wondering how to do the way. I would imagine like maybe a special action, like you encounter like a charge and it just sits as your special action key. But I was like, I didn't see anything. It's okay, no, no, don't worry. Um, let me see if Ben says anything. No. JTEC waypoint. Basically, oh, great, right, great, great. Keyboard oh, direct. Okay. Now, is it so 5G like or 4G? Puzzles. Yeah, what kind is of is it 3D? Is it an Ethernet, a USB? Oh wow! <laughs> I was reading it and I was like taking it so seriously for like two seconds just because my brain is wow. not here today. Now, and now, I was... if, if I got vaccinated and they put a microchip inside of me, will that interface? No, with... that's only five G. Oh, <laughs> it's not oh. one enough. It's that's not... why I keep like blowing up the X rays when I go to the doctor. <laughs> 
But is there, what is it then? <laughs> How do we activate it? You can't tell, you're not going to tell us. That would is be... this a super secret spoiler? <laughs> you have There's to commune with a deep sea dragon to activate the waypoint. There is a little menu, menu on the lower left corner of the toolbar. Oh, you, are you I covering I did see it? that thing. No, I did see at the very bottom of the weapon swap, I did see another tab oh, that looked yeah. different. Oh. But I thought oh. that was like for fishing. Yeah, it's really small. I'm like, I thought that That's was for fishing. That's for builds as skips. well. That's for build templates as well. No, isn't the it? build one is on top of the weapon swap key. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had the same thought though, too, Jeff. I was like, Andy. Yeah, I think so. Put a waypoint anywhere in the open worlds. Uh, so Just wondering. If you're like, yeah, no, you keep Because I think fishing and skips are also in there, so that might also be another way to activate your your jade waypoint. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so then cool. we used it, and then he's gonna open Wait, the map. You activate fishing. Do yeah. that too. Yeah, that's right. And oh yeah, oh yeah, the nice. look is completely different. Like it does nice. look. That's pretty cool. I like the little bit of art. Like, oh, the map. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to leave the map up for a second? Discuss the map if you want. <laughs> Yeah, we just stare at it for a while. We'll just look at I, it for a while. I mean... Let me open this original. Oh my god, it's so small. Never mind, I'm not opening up the original. Just look at, look at the stream. I'm looking in Discord because I sent it there. All oh, right, so, okay. It's so beautiful. So we have uh, Naxi Bay and Garden Heights and Baydal Hill. Keep talking about it. I'll be right back. Go, go, go. And there seems to be this legend thing. The bottom right corner. I think we're all so hungry for map art and just to see how large this this expansion is and especially because like Kantha is so far south. A lot of people have been wondering is this going to be like a separate map that we interact with or is it going to be one continuous map? But we've never, we've never had the bottom bottom right thing. Do you, you do we think that this is just like a legend for orientation or do we think that we will have to like activate this to go up north or south? depending on the, the the regions. It's a very good point. I mean, it could be something where it is just meant to be sort of cardinal-esque and the different colors are representative of, I don't know, the lore of elements or something that they want to put in with those different directionals. But at the same time, it feels like it wouldn't be there in a place that intuitively feels interactable. You know what I mean? Like that like bottom right-hand corner does make me feel as though, like you were saying, you could do something with it or click it or use it in some way especially as well because it's just underneath the like um you know uh, height terrain toggles and everything else with it i'm not sure yes maybe it takes you between different segments or hmm. anyone else have any other thoughts no <laughs> Awesome. I, I will say the map art though, I love seeing, at least from the map perspective, portions of the city and it looks very expansive. Of course, I think uh, they had mentioned in the previous stream that uh, New Kenning City is comparable to Divinity's Reach, but it might be a little bit lo uh, larger because of like the outskirts with the Zaitan stuff. Uh, but I, I just, I really want to get in and explore all of these mm -hmm. zones and I can't wait to see all the NPCs and like the merchants and all that stuff. Did you talk about the colors of the compass in the bottom right? A little bit. Not Well, not really the colors. Rick had mentioned the colors and what colors could mean. Do we want to go into some color theory? <laughs> could if you want. Is it just to move around? I've actually got a very, very out there idea. And I wonder what it's right. All right. What time hit us with it? Okay, so I think this is actually a way for you to control the map in a way with different keys, right? Maybe to look around the map if it's zoomed in, potentially, potentially. But hmm. if you think about it as well, does it kind of look like a control pad button setup? Oh, interesting. Hmm. I had not thought of that, but it could. It could look like a, a yeah. joystick. Yeah. But it looks like on a, I'm talking about on an Xbox controller or something. The buttons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But you see where I'm going? A kind, kind of. Controller, but also <laughs> future. Also I, Steam. 
controller I also could see that. yeah one thing one Console. thing that's kind of important to note is that if you go like if you zoom really far in you can actually see that like in the center of it there's another smaller arrow that seems to be like angling towards something i don't know if again mm. that's like it is actually a compass or if that's something that like is always pointing to your next main quest or i saw in chat people talking about it possibly having something to do with expansion maps which is kind of interesting like the idea that maybe if you clicked on it or you clicked on one of those four that it would like either automatically zoom you to the region of that expansion that you wanted or if it would like highlight it in some kind of way i don't i don't know if i personally think that's probably what it is because it seems to me that there would be a different way to create an interface that would feel more intuitive for that but yeah um it is kind of interesting. It is it's kind an of out there. Thing. It's an out yeah. there, out there thing. But sometimes I like to throw them in, you know, and like because I think it's gonna. I think for Guild Wars two to hit a level that other MMOs are at, they're gonna have to go to console. I think it. I think that's the main thing that's gonna get them to where they need to be, in my opinion. I mean, it could be the expansion, but I. I feel like. A separate conversation we've talked about marketing many times but we all know what the problem is there i think there's a lot there's like a lot a lot of games get that extra batch of peeps through console and like you know like final fantasy 14 like elder scrolls online and i'm not saying world of warcraft didn't need that but world of warcraft is so old that you can play that thing on a calculator do you know what i mean <laughs> i mean you can, obviously you can't but like you can play on some pretty old machines um, and you can play classic on, you know, whatever you want, pretty much. You probably could play that on a modern day calculator. If people even sell calculators anymore, I mean, do you buy a calculator? You've got a phone. Who needs a calculator? I don't know. The, the edge of the map is also really interesting because there is this, like, blue striation pattern across the screen. Do we think this is mm -hmm. just, like, in, in a dev client where it's, like, that isolated place? Or do you think that this could be the edge of the map uh, of some kind? Or just like a new map frame <laughs> for the Canada maps. I just zoomed in, right, to one section. I don't know what section it is. I mean, it could be something to just do like with. At the top of the screen, it looks like very detailed with like a blue pattern. Oh, that could be and like a jade. That looks like it could be jade because there's like a point of interest right there, like on I'm pointing to the screen. Mm. Uh, but like, <laughs> like right here where my where my mouse pointer is, there's like a POI right there. I don't think that's the end of the map. I think that's like the jade. Yeah, I just noticed that because like most yeah. of the time the maps are pretty smooth and they don't have like border effects around them. But this could just be like internal depth yeah. and stuff as well. And it could just be that they wanted to, I don't know, create a sense of mystery about what lies beyond or, you know, something like that. <laughs> I, I think there's different icons too. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the one you just went to. There's also one for the little bot under the heart. Cute. And that's under true. the heart up there. Look at him. He's so yeah. So that's like a, so that's the workbench. Well, what's this one? That might be under construction, but I don't think so. Is that a personal waypoint? Yeah. Which one? This one I've got, I'm kind of hovering around. That's that, that green one I think they just made oh. next to the main waypoint. Yeah, that's that, that one. In the garden heights. That's it the main point, yeah. A, a race that's the one he made with the mm -hmm. bot. This one. There's also one that is. red one up there too by the bait. Yeah. Bait on Whatever the red X is. <laughs> There is some new Don't stuff. Here. <laughs> yeah, there's some new Ooh, interaction interesting things. Mm -hmm. There's like a little white one too, kind of. That one, yeah. Yeah. I think that is actually yeah, that. a uh, thingy engineer. Um, oh, maybe that's, oh, yeah, that that's the like engineer. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah, that's the um, oh, NPC. That's, that's the engineer. Maybe they're NPC. the one that you talk to who gives you that bit of lore. Yeah, about yeah. The, yeah. That's even more interesting that they actually show up on the map because I'm like, yeah. quest, yeah, so you find it. Quest <laughs> potential, mm -hmm. quest <laughs> markers. These could be something to like go back to for collections or like further down the line. You have to go back to like that specific NPC to talk to them to get like a collection started. I don't know. I'd like yeah. to see it, especially if it's mm -hmm. on the map. Yeah, I like, I like that they that. all have different icons because it seemed like as they started adding newer types of NPCs for a while there, they all shared like whether it just because all of them had the little gold icon, but some of them were really for festival tokens, and so we finally got the one that had yeah. the little confetti on it. So you knew this is for festival 
this one's the merchant, this is Black Lion. You know, I, I like that it doesn't feel cluttered because it kind of helps define what everything is. Um, so you can find stuff. <laughs> Yeah, can so actually you can use the map. <laughs> can use and so that they map. draw your attention to <laughs> things or places that you might want to actually like really interact with as a greater part of the story. And we were just talking about with the Kainang tour that we really liked the fact that they had mentioned there were going to be these, you know, sort of role trainers that they were doing again, but that it really seemed like they were going to give you an idea of the lore behind your class and or the new elite specializations um, and how they kind of fit into everything or like the overarching culture and traditions of Cantha. So to have that marked as well, I think really does just give people something to move towards. And I think they had mentioned during that stream that there would be markers, but it's nice to like actually see them so that people will know right off the bat, like, hey, there is something I should do there. Hmm. Interesting. We don't have that long to we actually get to be in the maps and find out ourselves. Oh, there you go. And they're transported. So oh, there you go. So you used, they used the waypoint and they just completely disappeared. The Jade thingamajig. So it's just one charge, it looks like. Interesting. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what else there was. All right, let me see what else. I'm just going to leave that playing in the background, actually. Uh, da -da -da -da. What else? I mean, I like all the, the different protocols and different ways you can, you know, make it unique for you and your journeys, like recycling things, cleaning Rook's uh, inventory. Mm. <laughs> God, no one's looked probably at take, mine. Okay. Probably take more than one Jade bot to fix that. <laughs> it would take a whole army. I would need an army of Jade bot children. Yep. <laughs> it'd be just, it's a disaster. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. I like that it's customizable. I I honestly think that that element takes it to the next level, right? That makes this something that is truly a really fantastic feature because when it really comes down to it, the things that different people will find useful or convenient is as different as people are. So like what they're doing and how they play, um, you know, if this had just been a mastery that like was only one thing and didn't have this additional customization, a lot of people would have just been like, oh, I mean, it's fine. Some people probably would have been really excited because maybe they really want of that functionality but like by adding in this customization component and all the potential for future mods it creates this like i don't know just incredible consciousness for the players and the huge amount of ways that they play this game and interact with it um so that everybody can theoretically find something that would be of use to them in this mastery which is awesome mm -hmm. and i actually like that you can essentially turn it off because i know one of the I guess not necessarily like a complaint, but like one of the issues I've heard of people who are trying to do those death challenges, especially like now, you know, generate excitement and stuff, um, is just instinctually they start to glide. And usually in the mm. permadeath challenges, you're not supposed to like hit your glider. So I like that this has a way to turn it off. Like you don't have to access your mounts, but, you know, gliding is just kind of like, you know, the natural thing, you know, you hold down space while you start gliding so you don't want to die. Um, but I like that this is something that you can take out that power. So if you wanted to do a permadeath challenge, um, you wouldn't have this extra thing helping out, which I think true, is, true, true. Is, is a nice touch, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that you can, yeah, just not have that as well. Yeah, that's cool. I think mm -hmm. I will definitely use it, but there'll be... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very cool. I would have... Yes, it's going to be a good thing. And I want, now I want to see, like, Ben says something about like, not being able to talk about skins. I'm like... <laughs> Speculation. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> what do we think about this? This is just one of the... This is the res, the resurrection as well, the protocol resurrection thingamajig. It just replaces the heal. Cool. I love that. The animation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome. I think it's also something that, I mean, we talked about the fact that uh, the core, right, will increase essentially your health. Um, and that this, this like res, is something that now will also give players some versatility. And I think one of the things that is maybe difficult for new players, and I know it was definitely disruptive for me when I first started the game, is that I loved that there were like down states as opposed to just like straight up going to you are straight, you're dead, like that's it, right? Um, but I felt a lot of the times as a new player, like way back when, that um, I didn't really understand whether I was succeeding or failing. And oftentimes like 
I thought that resetting to a waypoint was going to be something that was really bad for me to do and like shameful. And that like, you know, it was one of those things where I was like, Damn. Uh, I, I felt as though I didn't necessarily get the experience of playing the game because I didn't totally understand the pace of the game and that it's like totally fine if you go down state. In fact, you have abilities for it. And also yeah. it's okay if you die and you reset at a waypoint. It happens a lot. You just do it. Um, but for new players to have a little bit more help in like staying alive long enough to get a sense of how these battles flow and you know like what you can do and how you rally i honestly think it's a good idea and it's not anything that, that's going to affect like we said pvp world versus world raids or those instance contents so it's i think just really useful honestly yeah and this spell effect is so nice i wish we got more healing effects that were as elegant and as well, you don't like the hand in the air, like vibrating. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Throwing rocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turn into a vaporous cloud and then plop back down. I like that. That say is such an awesome thing. But yeah, you're like, I mean, it, it, it does feel like that last kind of, I, I really like downstairs because I have these hype moments, especially when you're PvPing as well. <laughs> like, I just, I love the fact that, you know, you're there just with someone else in the downstate and you're pretty equal and you're like depending on the class i'm against in downstate i may win or lose this downstate fight and then like you're just literally there throwing rocks at each other base damage and stuff and you're just like <laughs> last second Criff is necro got you. and raids is, is lovely yeah exactly necro and raids is pretty hectic wait what there is a blog post Oh, really? Uh -oh. Oh. oh, they know the light bringers is on. That's why. Oh, my God. Wait, this is juicy. Wait, calm down. What, what's going on? <laughs> and there's new equipment attributes coming. Oh. Sorry. Oh, you're joking, Three. right? All I see no, is celebrate no. your brilliance with the diamond throne. <laughs> like, you're getting keen Still about that. Two. End of dragon strike missions, balance and rewards. It's LinkedIn chat. Okay, all right. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah? I yes. Mean, all right, are we going on to this now? Do you want to go on to this now? It's probably really juicy. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. I mean, we, I mean is, unless there's anything else we want to talk about the Jade thing, that seems like it's something that could be kind of exciting to pop on to. I mean, can I get okay. people to read it? Do we, like, do we like people to read? Would people like to I read it? I went to sure. the end, and there's, a, there's something really it. good in there. Oh, there's something good in there for raid tokens. Okay, all right. Don't don't say it out loud yet. We'll get someone. Who would like to read first? I will. And you don't have to read if you don't want to. Um, so. Okay. Do you want to take turns? Um, uh, What's popcorn read. Crew from Rook. Do you want to take turns in reading? Feels like elementary sure. school. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. So, so if, you, right. if you want to read, it's up to you. you. Don't have to. They just do these things all the time. <laughs> I was always get really nervous when I had to popcorn read in front of like the whole class. It was so anxiety inducing. Yeah, but you do it. You do it now. You don't have to. I can do it. I don't mind. <laughs> no, I have to, Jabro. You told me I have to in order to start oh, this podcast. Have... No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> Are we ready? Are Jabro we ready? sent a message. Oh damn yeah, it! It's ready. on the side. Okay. Wait a minute. Let me just let me just get this to a place where so I can. So sad. Uh, let me see. Good place. There we go. I'll put it there. Okay. Oh, you can't see our faces. No. That's okay. <laughs> All right, go on then. Uh, so, where do you want to start? Guild Wars 2, End of Dragon, Strike Missions, Balance, and Rewards. Hello, everyone. We're Cameron Rich. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Proof? Proof and I today will be playing the part of Cameron Rich. <laughs> we are, yes. We, we are, are Cameron Rich. <laughs> it's like the whole Star Trek <laughs> board freak. Oh, I oh, I see. Okay, okay. Encounters <laughs> design team lead and solar. So there's two people, Cameron Rich and solar, I believe. Skills and balance design lead. Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons is almost upon us, and we wanted to give you an advanced look at a few important changes that will help keep Guild Wars 2 endgame PvE content fresh and rewarding for a long time to come. These changes to rewards and profession balance work together with the design of our new Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons Strike Mission Encounters. Today, we're giving you some details so that you'll have a better idea of what to expect when the expansion launches on February 28th. Let's jump right into it. Striking back. Striking? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. 
Challenging group PvE content is one of the cornerstones of Guild Wars 2, and Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons will ship with four new strike missions available on launch day. You'll be introduced to each encounter and their core mechanics as you play through the story chapters, and access to each strike mission will be permanently unlocked for your account once you complete each relevant chapter in the story journal. By integrating these encounters directly into the story, we're looking to grow the strike mission audience and encourage as many players as possible to give them a try. Did you want me to finish this section or you want to go? You, you, you can finish the section. You're doing okay. great. We'll do oh, probably section by section. You're yeah. great. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> With this wider target audience, we've tuned the base difficulty of each strike mission to make knowledge and mastery over the encounter's mechanics the most important factors in achieving success. Each encounter has a series of pass or fail mechanical checks that reinforce this design philosophy, ensuring that groups can't bypass key mechanics while also ensuring individuals can still have heroic moments where they save the group from destruction. We sought to strike a balance where players of all kinds can enjoy the content and have a satisfying experience working their way towards victory. For those looking for even greater glory, challenge modes such uh, for each strike mission will be coming shortly after launch, with increased rewards for those who choose to tackle them. We're in the final stages of tuning and balancing these grueling encounters and can't wait to release them into the world. Check out our previous post on Guild Wars 2 of Dragon Strike Missions for more details. Nice. You want to have a break and talk about it, or should we just go through each of the sections? I mean, I mean we, there's a we, lot there. We, we could actually talk about the yeah. two sections we've done, so, so it gives us a little bit of, like, don't have to go back. So what was the yeah. first bit? Striking back, I guess. Uh, first bit was just the intro. I mean, that's it's big, kinda, right? That's some yeah, stuff it's... In there. It's summarizing what strike missions are in terms of story mode bosses, becoming more end game consistent content. They did go a little bit more into this pass or fail mechanical check, which would be pretty interesting. Uh, I know that some of the strike missions are more easy and you can actually just fully bypass mechanics. So it's nice to see that they're keeping that in mind. I agree. I mean, it's interesting to me because some of the fights that have the most longevity as far like in any MMO that I've played, but some of the ones that have the most longevity are ones where you literally have mandatory mechanics, you know? Um, and even now, even if you go back into those fights and a lot of games will facilitate or offer you some sort of way to like play them at your level and go back or, you know, whatever it is, um, the ones where you still have to know the mechanics for something are the ones that I think to me always feel like, oh yeah, this is the most engaging. And it's something that we've brought up a lot or even talked about. Jeb, I know, I think you'll have a lot of feelings about this because one of the biggest pet peeves that it seems like you've had um, has been the fact that people just do just straight up cheese stuff or ignore stuff or refuse to teach mechanics because, you know, they're like, well, we just don't do that. And so new players are like, uh, but I kind of want to know what the mechanic was. Like... <laughs> So to actually have something where the mechanics themselves and executing them is a required part of certain fights or at key moments is something that I think is super important for everybody to learn combat in this Hell game. Yes. For everybody yes. to learn how to execute <laughs> stuff in this game. It's an important I, thing. I absolutely. Very much agree because as someone who like I raid a lot and obviously like when first learning how to raid, everyone's doing all like you you glide at Gorse of all. And I'm now, I mean, as power creep has happened, that's kind of made that why you don't do it. But there's still, like, groups that maybe don't have that kind of DPS, and they get to that fight after being carried by, you know, more experienced players, and then they wind up in a pug group that just can't do it, and nobody knows what to do. It's like, yeah, break yeah, the wall. It's, it's yeah, like those runs. Exactly. They like, don't know. It is annoying, because like you watch newer players coming into the game, and streamers yeah. as well, and they don't get an accurate yep. experience at all. Like, there are new people, new streamers, and they're like, yeah, we did it first time. And I'm like, I mean... We stood the greens uh, on BG. You, you can barrier through greens. Yeah, you <laughs> but... stood there and <laughs> looked at the fight, but you didn't really do anything. And like, it was just like you right. get carried by flipping scourges all game. And that's cool like to have that yeah. experience to get through them, but you're not really experiencing it. And I would feel like mm -hmm. that experience, especially if like a big streamer comes on and just gets fully carried by like ridiculous, like cheesy it's not set it's not setting the game it's just not it's not highlighting the awesome mechanics that they put into mm. these fights because raiding is fun i feel like when you're even doing the mechanics more so and sometimes you people do just want to burn through them when they're just farming i, I get that but that is just it works awesome 
Oh, sorry, no. I was going to say, it works here, I think, too, because one of the other complaints I've always had about raids when you're doing training raids, like it might take the group a little bit of time to get through Solus Horror and then get through, I mean, we call it Rainbow Road, but, you know, go do the little like the road, get through the trio of bosses and then get to Doom. And then if the week resets, now you got to do it all over again, which is good practice. But if it takes a long time just to get back mm. to the Doom, you're never getting to train Doom unless you pay somebody some gold to open up the instance for you. So I think it integrates well with these strike missions because you just go directly to set boss. And I wish raids had that option as well, even if it was like a training mission. Like you didn't get any reward for it. It was just here, let's trade on Doom. I would love to see something like that um, kind of come back, but I, maybe this could be like that precursor into something like that. I mean, um, I think that's a yeah, big reason. Yeah, mechanics. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's a big reason that they did this, right? It's, um, mm -hmm. it's something where I think they're, is something to be said about the experience of a raid where like you were saying you are long term really like working through this big journey and a lot of that precedent as far as with my understanding came from world of warcraft and the way that they modeled raids yeah as a precedent in the mmo genre i'm not saying that you know like oh guild wars 2 ripped off world of Warcraft. no it's just that like many games based what they considered to be end game raiding off of they had what to be world the original of yeah that's fine um and that's that's totally fine, honestly. But we've started to see more and more games deviate from that a bit because exactly like you said, Sassy, I mean, it can be very disheartening and frustrating for people to have to like slog back through the things that they just achieved just to try and work on something really hard that they're trying to get done. Um, it also doesn't feel good if you don't totally know how to like have to ask people to skip in wings and pay for that money, right? Like usually that's stuff that other veteran players will have to facilitate for you. So from this first section alone, I love the fact that they've pointed out, right, like these pass or fail mechanics, that they've also pointed out the fact that they're integrating like these key big fight moments into the story directly, as opposed mm -hmm. to some of the previous, like just straight up duty, like, you know, uh, I would say like duty instances, but you know, like story instances that we had, where it's mm -hmm. like, you go in and you can bring friends in to do it, but it's not quite the same as having like, an actual fight that is structured where everybody goes in and you do the thing, you know what I mean? So it's kind of, a, I think, a great way to introduce people to that content, to create an experience where if people decide to engage with those CMs, they can work on them one by one. Um, and to also just like give those fights an epic feature and something where, you know, you can learn those basic mechanics in just the story mode and have to learn them and then kind of build off of that for challenge modes. Yeah, that's exactly. interesting this is it um it looks like the base it looks like base strike missions are going to be a lot easier than maybe they are now as well but that's because they've got the yeah. challenge modes which is good because it gets more people into them and it, it doesn't matter if it's like story mode it means like just lower the rewards like i, I want to know if they're going to have when they've got challenge modes if it's going to be like if there's going to be like an easy medium and hard I think that will that would be. I don't think I think that's a lot to manage. But imagine if it was. Like that would be quite cool. Um, I don't know. There's what else is there? Blah, blah, blah. I like that too because I remember when um, Heart of Thorns first came out and they released you know the first wing, and people were complaining like it's too hard. But I want to know the lore tied in a lot of the lore that was going exactly. on. Yeah, so I like that there's, I mean, I, I, I think gaming it in any way should have the easy mode, the hard mode. Cause some people just want to, like, get through the story and that's all they care about. They care about the story less than the fight. And some people want that fight. That's how they're and managing I this. I guess story could yeah. be, like, the easy mode. The, the normal mode of the strike mission is, like, the medium and the challenge mode might be the hard mode. You could, yeah, definitely look at it like that. I mean, that's, that's the thing, right? story is replayable, so yeah. you just replay those boss fights. And it's not... Yeah. And it's just, yeah, you're single. But, like, I guess that is how, and, like, talking about what, what Sassy said, and we've talked about this many times as well, about, like, locking you out of the story. If they put it, if it is from the story, this makes complete sense as to why they may even just be just going for strikes in the future because of law and because of people with that complaint, which is probably more so um, one of the bigger complaints, I think, from people in the community who really do like the story in law because Guild Wars 2 is pretty rich in it. 
is that now everyone has access to it. Like it literally is an accessibility issue and it has been an accessibility issue in the past. And people who say, oh, you can go and look at it on YouTube. That's just bollocks. That's not, <laughs> that's not being in the game experience. Yeah, that's not it. That's some, that's watching through someone else's eyes. I don't think that's as fun. Um, yeah, like every game mode <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> like, just... <laughs> and honestly it is just an accessibility thing right yeah, like yeah, yeah. because whether or not somebody wants to try hard as we see like here all the time in the mmo community um some people may be trying very hard but what they can do is different or you know they have different needs or concerns or like their energy levels their effort levels whatever it is right like or you know they literally have um you know a disability and they're working with that like i know so many players with so many different backgrounds so if you're giving them ways to engage with what you're creating because they want to and they love it then like that is always better for me than like trying to keep people out by setting some weird threshold or hurdle right like more options never less um also one thing that i just wanted to mention before we move on to a different section though is the fact that it does mention that once they're unlocked on one character it seems like they're character wide that's a little extra so yeah like, that's good dungeons are not like that and it bothered me <laughs> Oh you yeah, because like, really you had to do the, story the base mode. story mode first. Oh, yeah, I remember. Someone, someone would have to open it, and then they could go back on a different character if they wanted to. But yeah, I I, I like that. I remember. Like, once you do it, once it's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was annoying, and you were just like, "Oh, who's is someone unlocked all the story modes for like each one?" So you're going to be the person who's going in, and you have to play that one character and. Yeah, it was, it was always interesting. Okay. Are we are we good with that? Are we okay with as well? Like, do, do you yeah. think it's all right to go and play, like, the story and, like, unlock it on one character before you can do the strike? Like, I feel like... It, yeah. That's, I mean, that's fine. Because you could always just party up with someone else who has it. But because it's going True. to be, like, once you play it, hopefully everyone would like to play through the story and then they'll have it forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean... Yeah. That bad. And Guild Wars, <laughs> Guild Wars 2 story, they're always so careful about how they balance it too, right? Where like, out of all the games I play, I think that Guild Wars 2 is one of the few ones where I don't hear people a lot of times complaining about like, oh, they make me do so much story or like, you know, or that they feel that they're so restricted by it. Like Guild Wars 2 is much more freeform. They offer a lot of experiences and like your story journey is oftentimes very active and dynamic and fully voiced. So it's one of those things where like taking a character through it to unlock it. <laughs> Chris, stop banging it on Jebro's wall. Hey, I gotta get this attention somehow. Really nice job. Like a lot of their instance content is for like, it's almost usually more talking. There's like some fighting and then it's being out in the open world and doing things like hearts and events and all that that furthers the story. So it makes yeah, everything kind of tie in together, which I like. So I don't mind that this is locked behind doing the story because it's, I mean, that's what they did with the DRMs in a sense. That the DRMs kind of flowed into the story, but I like that this is not the DRM. I like that it's a story. Oh, yeah. so you don't just go and like don't big, be a DRM. No. Don't be yeah. a DRM. Okay. Should we read yes. the. Yeah. <laughs> Should we read <laughs> Jebro, Sassy, would any of you like to read? I'm fine. Oh. You're fine. <laughs> Um, okay. I, I can't ask. I, I'd rather listen to you a lot read. I mean, in Sassy, you don't have to read as well. There is zero pressure unless you really want to. There's so much pressure, Sassy. You must read. <laughs> I want to read the raid section. That's for us. social pressure. All right, you can do, you, do you want to, you want to read the raid oh, section? Oh yeah, you can do the raid rewards. Awesome. Further down. Okay. It's further down. Yes. Okay. So reward <laughs> changes. With Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons, we're adjusting existing reward systems to make it clearer how they fit together, to ensure they're exciting and have long-term appeal, and to give them a role in crafting legendary equipment. Mmm, delicious. These changes affect high-end fractal rewards, Ice Brood Saga strike, mission reward, strike missions, rewards from new Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons strike missions, and an additional to raid reward vendors for the high-end fractal rewards. We approach any adjustments to our Mystic Coin economy with a lot of care. Mystic Coin are a fundamental currency used to create mystic clovers and are used directly in many legendary items. Currently, challenge mode fractals are one of the largest single sources for mystic coins entering our economy, as each boss in challenge mode 98, 99, and 100 has a small chance to award either one, two, or three mystic coins. 
get doing those challenge modes, the great. Although this chance uh, is random and unreliable, it adds up as many players take on challenge mode fractals consistently, making fractals the most efficient one-stop source for obtaining the gold, mystic coins, and mystic clovers you need for legendary progression. We want to spread the love to other types of content, but that means that no single source should award such high amounts of legendary resources at the same time. The following changes will arrive with the expansion launch. Mystic Clover purchases from the Fractals vendor now resets weekly instead of daily. Ugh. You can purchase up to 10 Mystic Clovers per week. Okay. But you can the, get how many a day now? You can get two a day, but now you can purchase up to 10 Clovers per week. So it's instead only, of doing so it was two 14. a day. Okay, so uh, reduced it by less. four. Slight, slight reduction. Mm -hmm. The cost of each Mystic Clover you purchase from the Fractal Vendor has been adjusted to cost one less glob of ectoplasm and one more Mystic Coin. Ooh. The total cost for Mystic Clover is 150 Fractal Relics, two Mystic Coins, two globs of ectoplasm, and two Spirit Shards. This is approximately two-thirds of the average cost of creating a Mystic Clover via the Mystic Forge. Bosses in Challenge Mode 98, 99, and 100 no longer have a chance to drop Mystic Coins. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Uh, mm, okay. Interesting. Uh, the new price and weekly frequency of the discounted Mystic Clovers from Fractal Vendors will be consistent with other sources of Mystic Clovers we're adding to strikes and raids. I actually really love that. The removal of Mystic Coin drops from the challenge mode bosses creates room for us to add a consistent and predictable source of Mystic Coins to strikes. Rook, would you like to... Do you want to... Yeah. Should, we, like to should we talk we about wanna, this yeah, first? Should we talk about this for a second? Oh, sure, I'm sure, like, sure, sure, yeah. Because this is, I don't actually know if this is a good idea or not. I feel, I feel like they've I gone... think it's a great deal, idea. You, you think it's a great yeah. deal? I think, yeah, it's a great deal. It's a deal, well, it's, it's a deal. It's a deal. It's a if you only do century. fractals, it might not be the best deal, but I think in terms of bringing people to raids and strike missions specifically, it's fantastic to have a consistent form of Mystic Clovers. I didn't think they were going to do it for strike missions. However, I had recommended it uh, in passing sometimes. Like, they should really give something to strike missions that lead into a legendary because right now there's no connection to that so i'm i'm very happy to see that yeah. yeah me too honestly i mean it's one of those things where especially with this new set of legendaries that are coming out and all of the cosmetic iterations and like the chance of the new expansion to get people into something and get people excited about something like a legendary grind you know this is a great time to not only do that, but also to feature this new content type that you are putting a lot into, and that will likely become an active part of our end game. I mean, I've said from the beginning that I think that strikes have a ton of potential. There were a lot of things they needed to figure out with them, and they spent that time, you know, figuring it out and introducing a range of them in the Icebird Saga, some which, you know, the community found to be very successful, others which, as we discovered and they acknowledged, maybe had some pitfalls or, you know, mechanics that could be skipped or were too easy in certain regards or so on and so forth, right? But introducing new content like this will always have some kind of adjustment period where you're figuring out how to do it and to like get it into a better place and then also tie some of these rewards to it. Plus, most of the people that I've heard that like grind fractals are kind of tired of like only having to do that. Like it's fun on one hand, but I think that having other sources for it and encouraging people to invest in a different type of content might be a nice breath of fresh air after so long of kind of predominantly this being yeah. an area where you grind a lot of different things. And I think it goes back to that accessibility thing too. Like, I mean, 98, 99, 100 on CM, like once you done them enough times and if you're with like four other people who are really good and reliable on you know their roles because it's even i feel like more punishing i think even than raids like you lose someone in raids generally nine people can still do it you lose someone in fractals it's a lot more punishing um and it's harder to get into you got to find people to train you on how to even be cms so i think bringing in mystic coins where someone can who can do these strikes can now get some mystic coins out of it and not have to like farm all this gold to be able to buy mystic coins which are very vol i mean they're somewhat volatile like you know this year or last year i guess going kind of up and down um so it'll kind of give them more of an option and be seems like purchase the mystic clovers maybe outright which it's nice that's what it sounds like <laughs> maybe um we shall see yeah um i think that that's that's a nice 
um, thing they're doing, especially when you're adding in, I guess, what's next, the Gen 3 sets of legendaries. Now there's more, because some people might say, I really like having Eternity, but I also want that or You know, you got to make it all over again. <laughs> it's interesting that they're shifting. Good. It is, it is good. I think they've... <laughs> I think they've made a bit of a mistake though because I think Fractals is probably their highest population of end game like instance content that they have going now now I would argue Actually, if, you, if you go into the like the kind of lobby and stuff as well it's kind of ridiculous but like I feel like this is the, <laughs> I get what they're doing and I think it's really good I think it's also good that they push another Re, like another area of content and they do switch seats so they make like you're saying Kruf as well like make that valuable for legendaries you know it makes absolute sense but to, to take it the mystic coins completely away it feels like a it feels like a real like it feels a bit forced like it feels like it feels too forceful it's like right we're taking it away from here and we're sticking it here and now you gotta go do this thing and and we're not you know it's not that bad really but at the same time i feel like there's a fractal community i feel like there's a community there which kind of you know is based around those rewards and they've got a team of five people and they'd go and do this thing and okay yeah maybe they maybe they're bored of it and that's also another thing i don't do fractals that much anymore but i know that a lot of people that do and I'd, I'd get, I guess maybe it's worth. I would like to know someone's opinion who does those quite often as well. I think and see what they f initially think. I know there was some kind of gut reactions in chat, but I think my reaction is my gut reaction is like it feels a bit forced. It feels a bit like too much, like that way. Like it could have been like a half and half thing. Maybe you know, take a couple of mystic coins, chuck them in this other place, chuck them in this mystic coin here. Get everyone to kind of go around and do all of the content rather than just be like go do strikes now and raids because that's where you're going to get the most of x y z for your time mm. um actually z for your time wow and uh, like you're integrating into no, the system rather you. well job, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, but at the same time it does make me think then that you know they really do want to push you into, into strikes and stuff and that's good there's there's incentive there's more incentive there and i'm interested to see what more incentive there is for that to to be the case as well and i guess we're going to find that out as we continue going on through this article i mean it does bad, seem but... to me though okay maybe i'm all of you can clarify for me if i'm mm -hmm. reading this wrong <laughs> please do uh because i haven't done this full grind for legendaries i'm actually going to be starting my first legendaries with end of dragon so the way that i read this though is that like mm -hmm. you can buy those mystic clovers still from the fractal vendor correct and you still need fractal relics to buy the mystic clovers as well as coins so in theory you would still be incentivized to run fractals right and then also run strikes to get the coins so that like cumulatively if you wanted to buy those clovers you'd have to use both types of content is Unless that correct there is um, a vendor for strikes they, it seems like that's what they want to do. They want you to have the acquisition of Mystic Clovers be with Fractals and Mystic Coins be more with Strikes and Raids. I do, to some degree, agree with you, Jebro. Um, I think because like you had the chance of getting three Mystic Coins per boss for a challenge mode, mm. they could have done it in a way where instead of you get a chance for three for each boss, they would have maybe just reduced it down to you could only get one to maybe reduce a little bit of it. Yeah. Uh, it is a, maybe too heavy handed because people love Mystic Coins and it does only require you to get five friends to have a party of five rather than getting ten. Exactly. Yeah, so, exactly. Maybe if they just reduced it down to only getting one instead of a possibility of getting two or three. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, but I, I kind of agree with you on that point to, to a degree. Or at least I mean, like my... chucking a way to make LFG easier so you can find other people on top. I I guess. Mean, that I think just needs to be a baseline. <laughs> oh, we're we're yeah. talking about this. I mean, my um... other guess also is that, I mean, Mystic Coins are how what a lot of the everybody who know they've amassed probably a lot of these i mean through alt accounts and everything else i'm wondering if this is their way of finally tanking that economy a bit um just because i mean it's at what almost yeah. two i don't know what it is it was around two gold i think it's slightly dropped but i imagine with end of dragon the set's going to go up as people want to make these new legendaries so i wonder if this kind of helps alleviate 
some of that. Because, I mean, there's people who have terrible luck. They could toss in thousands of Mystic Coins in there and hardly get any Clovers. I've got 2,000. I'll 2, think it's not my luck. That's all I ever get. All I ever I get did... is Mystic Clovers when I do it. If anybody wants my luck, take it. I mean, I did 10 pulls and I got 7 Clovers. So I was very happy. Oh, yeah. Ooh. So, yeah, it, I get I my mean, Mystic Clovers from PvP, so... To it. <laughs> that is, I think, a really good point got brought up, though. And I mean, obviously, we need to read the rest of this. Um, but I do think that if they really want to make this kind of content, one, story intrinsic, and two, something that like has big rewards and all this kind of stuff. And even with fractals, you know, it's any kind of content in this game um, where you have to group, having some kind of automated duty finder, role finder, looking for group, like... It's Sorry, so... every time an American says duty, they say sounds like they're saying duty. Duty, poopy, duty <laughs> finder. I'm just Any like, time. Just, oh, just I'm sorry, sorry. Jebra. Would you like me to say duty finder? Is that is it? Duty. 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 Is that child. better? Yeah. It's not your duty to police how duty. Rook says duty. Duty. <laughs> <laughs> like that. So if if they put a duty finder into you, you sound like a drunk too. like. I love <laughs> tequila, tequila, and oh, tequila good. as well. Okay. It's it's tequila. the voice of tequila. Duty, yeah, that's it. Duty, J. Duty. Um, Duties. God, you oh, totally distracted nice. me. Okay, now you said something. <laughs> no, no, sorry, back. sorry. You said like duties okay. um, in uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. If they could have a party, or like they'd have it on the for group. Yeah, where oh. you can automatically queue for something and then get matched with other people. That That'd kind cool. of system is going to be something that is like hugely important. We already have the like private listings through looking for group, which is definitely, at least in many American countries, from what I understand, in player bases, more commonly used for difficult content like raiding or endgame stuff. That's certainly my experience, um, like the challenge modes of these, right? But to just get people queued in for these and to get them running, right? Having something where it can pair you with other people automatically is going to be a really big thing. Um, I don't know if we're getting that with release, uh, but it's definitely something you need to think about for the future, I think. Um, because, yeah, it's tough with this kind of content. You just got to get people in there and matched. They don't, if they have to, if people have to take the extra step to create their own listing, it sounds silly, but like 80% of people will yeah. not do it. They just won't. They just don't. Anxiety comes into that quite heavily as well. I like a role finder too, because a lot of times you'll say you're looking, let's say you need a heal burn. Someone joins and they're like, DPS. And I'm like, okay, but that's not what I need. Or people don't update it like they'll already have a heal. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. No, we really need a so-and-so. And I'm like, you know. Being able to, <laughs> to queue and to attach your own role that you're playing and then get into a finder, I think mm -hmm. that would really be a great feature for guild wars 2 and having an option where it's like join random fractal or random dungeon or random strike mission and just like cycle through a bunch of old content as well um i think those are those are good systems to look into for the future i think it's a really good Reward. system yeah, i like yeah. that idea yeah yeah uh okay rook would you like to do this strike mission yes before? i would love to thank you i'm going to read it as tequila <laughs> ice brood saga no, i'm kidding <laughs> Yeah, That'd be more like. No. Where are we? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do are. it. Okay. Ice right, Brood I Saga Strikes Blue Profit Chart. Right now in the live game, Ice Brood Saga Strike missions award red, blue, and green profit charts. The color awarded changes from week to week. This is more complicated than it needs to be, and it can be difficult to learn how each type of currency is used and what they're for. Yes, <laughs> I'm over here like I'm literally over here going. Do they reward those? I d I did a, f a oh bunch yeah they of do. Them. The only reason I know the only reason I know is because I opened a chest by accident one day. And also, like, <laughs> how many currencies are there in the game? <laughs> There's so right. many. They need to do right. it. Oh god, Kevin, sorry, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> um, this system will be improved with the following changes on February 28th. All Icebird Saga strikes will only award blue profit charts. All Icebird Saga Strike rewards that used to cost green and red profit shards now cost blue profit shards. All your red and green profit shards will be automatically exchanged for blue profit shards the next time you log in after the expansion launches. 
Green profit shards are now awarded by new End of Dragon strike mission, <laughs> and red profit shards are no longer in I read. So they've reduced it by one <laughs> <Amazing>. currency. <laughs> Who needs red? That's all I've done. They've just reduced. Yeah, they kind yeah. of lost me at this was confusing, so we took them all out, but now green profit shards. Maybe. Okay, okay. No, maybe okay. they are it's turning profit of shards into a larger currency system, right? As in they are turning profit shards into like a a currency you would earn from each portion of the game. So they are like they assigning blue to ice brood and green. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. exactly what they're doing. Yeah. So they're splitting them. I kind of hoped that they would have had a homogenous singular currency for strike missions, because I think strike mission as a system is is, you know, just keep it keep it the same. But currently, they are splitting Ice Brood Saga Strike missions apart from End of Dragon uh, End of Dragon Strike missions. So, if you want to get blue, if you want to farm blue, do a bunch of Ice Brood Saga ones. If you want to farm <laughs> green, do a bunch of End of Dragon Strike missions. I mean, I honestly think that's smart, though, because my one yeah. big worry about like every single strike mission all having the same currency long term would be the fact that like if people just didn't care for certain fights, they just would literally never do them and they just run the one that they liked and that was fastest and then they would just farm the currency that they wanted. So like to me, it's kind of nice to have certain rewards that are and I hope that they are like specifically affiliated with certain sets of strike missions because then it still gives you some flexibility yeah. to earn those things. Or you can't earn but, it more than one in that yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like you have to, you still have to go play that content <laughs> if yeah. you want those things. So okay, I think you can go if you want to. Is this the? Oh yeah, the green profit shards. Do you want me to do this one or do you want to do this one? You can finish. Yeah, you can finish the green okay, ones. Out. Okay, thanks. <laughs> End of dragon strikes. Green profit shards. Guild Wars 2 End of Dragon Strikes will all award green profit shards, which can be spent at a new vendor found in a hub area in Cantha. In addition to their own new set of rewards, Guild Wars 2's End of Dragon Strikes will have two weekly limited trades, allowing you to exchange your green profit shards for materials used to create legendary equipment. Ten times per week, you can trade ten green profit shards and one spirit shard for one mystic coin. Five times per week, you can trade 30 green profit shards, two mystic coins, and two globs of ectoplasm, and two spirit shards for one mystic clover. All right. A lot of mystic coin and clover acquisition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is this the raids and mystic, uh, mystic clovers that you wanted to, to read, Sassy? Yes. I was like, oh, oh my gosh, this, this excites me. <laughs> okay, go for it. All right. Raids and mystic clovers. We're also adding a Mystic Clover purchase option that'll give raiders a way to spend their raid currencies on broader legendary progress. Ten times per week, trade 30 Magnetite Shards, two Mystic Coins, two Globs of Ectoplasm, and two Spirit Shards for one Mystic Clover. Between 10 per week from Fractals, 10 per week from Raids, and five per week from Guild Wars 2 End of Dragon Strikes, you can purchase 25 discounted Mystic Clovers each week. We don't expect every method to be equally efficient for everyone, and which ones are best for you depends on the type of content you play regularly. If you play Fractal Challenge modes often, then you have access to lots of Fractal Relics, and so Fractals will remain an efficient source of Mystic Clovers for you. Raiders will be able to spend up to 300 Magnetite Shards per week to convert into Mystic Clovers, which is the maximum earned from killing bosses each week and converting Gating Crystals into Magnetite Shards as well. Although some Raiders can earn a little more from sources such as Extra Boss Minis and the Weekly Achievement for completing 5 Raid Challenge Mode bosses. The 5 Mystic Clovers a week from Guild Wars 2 End of Dragon Strikes are an option if you don't have access to regular or regular access to raids or lots of fractal relics, but players who engage across multiple types will find it most efficient to earn their Mystic Coins with Strikes and then spend those for Mystic Clovers using either fractal relics or Magnetite Shards. With Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons, you'll have more options and all our in-game content can help you advance your legendary goals. Outstanding. Amazing. Sell it. Sell it. Cool. Outstanding. You better work. You yeah. better work. Yeah. I, I like I like that. Because I have so many magnetite shards that I know myself and other raiders, we just buy ghostlies and give them away. Because I'm like, I don't know what to do with these. Do you want these? Especially with the legendary armory. And a lot of us have like worked and made a lot of legendaries. We try to buy the ascended. 
I'm like, what do I do with this? I'm just give people peerless infusions, I guess. I don't know what else to do. So it it's nice that it gives people who raid a lot other ways to utilize these. Or if you get lots of minis like I do, like I think five this week alone. Yeah. Convert all those and still still get more. And I like that they balanced it out that if you completed a full set of the heart of it's like so if you do like I guess wing one through ring four, you're maxing it. and even that I think is more than the hundred. Um that you'll max it out as long as you do like, you know, the three, three and a half wings or whatever to get those. So yeah. Very true. Fun fun times for race strikes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is so nice, honestly. It's so nice because there are so many people that have hoarded up so many of these, like, and who probably do want stuff that's coming up or want to be able to engage with, like they said in this, any content that you particularly like. Or if you have only been farming a certain type of content to get X thing, now you can do all these different types of content. So like, again, I think this is, I personally think this is really smart. I think this is really great. And it also shows that they are, it seems like very much aware of these different content types as far as the like PVE options go in game and like trying to bring them together as a cohesive thing, which gives me hope even for like, you know, down the road something more about raids or something more about you know it's nice to actually see like all of these acknowledged as components and facets and allow you to use them in ways to engage with other systems in the game like legendaries Mm -hmm. wow okay i i guess i i keep forgetting that (laughs) mystic clovers are never a problem for me (laughs) i've never had a problem with mystic clovers i mean you just get (laughs) you get two at the end of a pvp reward track and i've just been pvp for so long that they've just accumulated and i've just like got this excess of stuff so like magnetite shards for you are like my mystic clovers well actually no (laughs) i've got thousands but i've got like you know probably a good couple of legendaries worth which is cool but like I guess that's a good thing about PvP because PvP rewards are actually not too bad. At it times. has that spirit shard sync too, which I like. Cause that's another thing that I know there's like I guess them into, but I'm like that's just too much work for me. Like now I can use them, get my make what I like. Sassy, sometimes we miss know. what you say. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like your mic like isn't activating. It keeps I'm cutting sorry. out. Sorry. I don't know if it's it the. Gets upset. It's the Discord like activation thing. I'm not probably sure. It's so, like I don't want you to feel oh, that we're not. It probably is. It might be Discord I'm sometimes. Sorry. Is being weird. Those it's, damn it... noise gates. No, we, yeah, and the noise gates. I know. It's okay. We've heard you most of the time. The worry yeah, no, exactly. No, it's okay. It's okay. I get. I get what you're trying to do. Um, it's just then no, it was I, more noticeable. Saying that I like that it's a. I like that it's a spirit shard. Think. Yeah. Because I don't know what to do with them half the, time, and I'm too lazy to do the money grind whatever thing for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, just tell me what I can make with this, and I'll move on with my life. <laughs> there we go. That's it. This is that's the important thing. We need to get on with our lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to play the game. I don't want to be sitting here doing maintenance mode all the time. It's <laughs> very true. No. Tell that to Rook's inventory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you not seen mine? I'm sure Rook and I have identical inventories. Lara, Lara's is also. <laughs> A lot of us have terrible Lara's inventories. have like terrible inventories. I've we like, I, I literally right now have been raising money for a charity, and I was like, there's no way. Because Jeb, you inspired me actually with your uh, Baldathon goals. I was like, there's no way that if I'm like, oh, every you know, $5 donated, I'll clear an inventory slot. And immediately it was just like. <laughs> I started streaming. People were like, please, 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 clean it, <laughs> That's what Excellent. I need to do. See, the Baldafon influencing charity. I had a channel player redemption drives. and it went crazy. Yeah, that's good. exactly. That's it. That's it. I mean. I apologize every time I open it on stream. I'm like, I'm sorry. Don't look at this. If you apologize, Sassy. then, you, you know, you just. It's not submit. here. You don't see it. Just <laughs> embrace it. Yeah. Just embrace Bad. it. I used to apologize Bad. all the time. And now I open it and I go like this. <laughs> and I look straight <laughs> in the camera. And if anybody complains about it, I just pull it up and I make it even bigger. Leave and I'm just there. like. What did you say? Oh, yep. no, I'm proud of it. I love it. And then I just do that. I just like straighten the camera. You just stare them down. <laughs> if I had hair, I would probably do that as well. Well, you could get a wig, Jab. Yeah, just get a lace front. I have we'll wigs. Install, I've got like we'll three. Get, we'll get you. We'll install a unit on your head. 
I just feel you'll like be, I wouldn't be able to do it as well. Here. Yeah, but like the hair is not real no, hair. I'd fine. have to strain it. It's... Yeah. You, no, it's hair. like duct tape around your head. Place the wig, pin it in, glue the lace. You're good. Yeah, but that's, I ain't got time to do that. <laughs> I, I, think we should, I think we should have uh, light bringers in which crew teaches us all how to properly put wigs on. I would Stop. be so down for it. I love it. We all have to do like a different themed makeup Ooh. look and then put wigs on that match. Like, I'm just saying, I think we should consider it. I like, the, I'd watch. <laughs> Or Dark I don't care stills. either way. I'm like, I'd, I'd watch it at a speed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Let's just, to, uh, just get every single past guest <laughs> to come on, and we all just get cosplay. armed. Cosplay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Who doesn't love cosplay? That's Equipment, <laughs> profession, and skill this is big. updates. Let's go. Be good. Be I good. am excited. Come on. Okay. Be good. Here we go. This is going to be very um, fun. Uh, where we're <laughs> That's not in from, the blog post, is it? It's not, but I you like to interject some times. You're promising, you're promising things uh, right now. Damn. Careful. Where we're coming from and where we're going. We are uninstalling Guild Wars 2 on every single client. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I was like, what? Where's that? We're done. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Bring the player, not the profession. That's our goal. We want to ensure that every player feels like they're able to play the profession they like or identify with the most and bring valuable contributions to the group. This means roles should be determined by your build and gear rather than your profession. Guild Wars 2 is about positive cooperative encounters. When more players play at the same time and place, they are all stronger. No profession is purely selfish and completely unable to benefit nearby allies. Warrior would like to have a talk. A year ago, <laughs> essential gameplay roles such as alacrity and quickness were only able to be filled by a few specific builds. In May of last year, we added a couple of additional options. While this has improved the diversity we see in actual raid groups, it was just a start. The nine new elite specializations coming in Guild Wars 2 and of Dragons spread boon support roles to professions that didn't have access to them, making it easier to slot the profession you like to play into the role your group has available. At its core, Guild Wars 2 thrives when the game encourages build diversity. A few additional changes are coming to increase party, uh, increase parity mm -hmm. between professions on a wider scale. Yeah, that Lovely. word is not used often. I'm, I'm going to say parity is not... Uh... I was expecting like a, a nice parody of like a Justin Bieber song or something. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> a, that's a different parody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like writing parodies. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, it's worth... I mean... <laughs> There's not really much to say. Yeah. There? I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's like it's it's a thing. Cool. I mean, yeah, we know actually. And I think it it would be good to say. Uh, see there. This is where I think they should do something additional with their blog posts. Say a few additional changes are coming to increase par parity between professions on a wider scale. One is video, small clip, a shot, a screenshot, yeah. something hmm. to give you a little bit of meat in there with the, with the blog post you know rather than just a wall of literal text which is literally what these blog posts are always <laughs> and they're so painful to read sometimes and just like should i tell you what get rook get rook in there get Kroof, get sassy get someone oh. get one of the creators to narrate <laughs> the thing over some game footage even if it's just game footage it's already in the game a small video a page which is easily oh. accessible you don't have to scroll down you watch a video you hear someone awesome talking about the game easily accessible just easier rather than these long-winded long, -winded, long Arena posts net. You got my email. Hit me up any time. I'll do it for free. Use the people. Like, this is the thing. Like, I just, I don't know why games t continue to do this. It's, mm -hmm. There are other games which don't do this as well, to be fair. Yeah. I think, I feel like it's an M, maybe it's an MMORPG thing. But even just in this little bit, right? You know, you know when we have balance and skill changes? Um, mm -hmm. And then there's a post. Guild Wars 2 Wiki does it so well. <laughs> I'm just like, they've got the skills on there. They're, and they've got like the links, they've got the skill cut, like the everything. And I'm just like, you can click the skill, you can see what it used to do. And the Wiki works in tandem with Guild Wars 2. It's like, cool. Just get the Wiki people to do it. <laughs> like, just give them, you know, <laughs> give them the information <laughs> and like, just send them it. And just and get them to link it up. It just, it's just so much more interactive and more 
just accessible and just fun to engage yeah. with you know like i just and this is why i'm getting you sort of to read it because it's more fun for me i thought i don't want to read it <laughs> <laughs> jebra was like i would have never read this if you weren't all reading it well to me, jebra so. I, I, I would have you should read the next I think you should I mean, read the next section. Okay, I mean, squad, that. skill, target, caps, and PvE. Yeah. You should oh. become part of this. Wait, was that the really only loud. thing about skill, like, and stuff? Oh, bugger. They were just saying <laughs> they were going to try and do more to make but, it so that no matter what you specifically were playing profession-wise, you would be able to have some kind of option in there. And I like that. I honestly like hearing yeah. them even talk about this because just knowing that they reiterate that phrase I think is so good. Guild Wars 2 is about positive cooperative encounters. I love that. It makes me happy, you know? Yeah, that's nice it's nice there. just to see like that put as the forefront of a goal in a community and a game yeah. and to try and encourage other people to make that a goal as well. I think, yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely... And that first bit, like... Um... I think it's essentially it's so difficult to do in this game though and in any MMORPG as soon as you start to add more classes specializations there's no way that across the board you're going to let everyone's going to be able to play the thing they want to play and it's it's a credit to them that they would try <laughs> I think but everyone's always going to just play the thing that I mean I think in more in like our community specifically we'll probably play the thing we enjoy more so than the higher end I think that's okay as long as you can do that successfully and still get the thing done to a level cool but then it's like how do you balance that on the higher end and everything else I don't know but I think that's it's okay to have medals and stuff still but I think it also is a little bit more I basically I just wanted to get rid of Scourge <laughs> and anything that just that cheeses part. stuff. Rude. Like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not get rid of it. Barrier. But... You it's know what so I mean? Fun. It is, it, yeah. It's actually fun to play. Like when if you're the healer, <laughs> like I feel like that's cool. Like there's some you know porting people to you, raising them. That's that's a cool mechanic. Um, it's a bit strong. Uh, okay. All right. Shall I read this then? I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> oh no. I knew it. 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 I'm out. I'm logging out. Thanks for the podcast. Bye. Please, please do it like that. Uh, the whole thing right now. I, I do, it, but people won't listen. They'll switch off. Uh, forming a squad, <laughs> skill target caps in PB. I actually did the wrong one. I was meant to do this one. Currently forming a squad for 10 player content requires juggling roles between subgroups. So that's my Molag Ball from ESO. I see. It was good. It's powerful. It Majestic. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'll start again. Currently forming a squad for 10 player content requires juggling specific roles between subgroups based on target caps. Ooh. Some roles, such as Alacrity and Warrior's Banners, have a target cap of 10 players, while almost all others, such as most healing, quickness, and other boons, have a target cap of 5, probably because of PvP as well. And they just never change it. <laughs> oh well. Originally the 10 player cap on Renegade and later Mirage and Alacrity was because there were so few options to fill this essential boon role. Good also end of Dragons will give Engineer, yay, Guardian, and their th and Thief support builds access to alacrity that still blows me away actually thief having alacrity and just healing and stuff and thief is literally the most developed i'm so excited yeah that's gonna be good that is gonna be good um and necromancer will be able to provide quickness uh with these added options now is the right time to simplify this aspect of squad uh, formation that is really really cool with elixirs as well with the aoe swift uh sorry quickness it is going to be, it, it, this is the thing I'm most excited about. Elite specializations, man. I'm like, Harbinger is going to be so good. And just all of them. Engineer, FIFA is just completely different. They've, they've done the best job with FIFA. Even though, like, I'm not the most hyped for FIFA, I feel like they've just done what they should be doing with elite specializations and just been like, we're going to flip you upside down and just completely change the way you play. Um, and get other people into your class. I think it's such a good way to get people into the class. It's so good. Most 10 target skills and traits in PvE will have a maximum target cap of 5 in the expansion. Ooh, okay, they're changing literally everything. Imagine their current target caps in PvP and World v. World. Generally, this will mean that for each subgroup in a squad for strikes or rage, you will want a healer, a source of quickness, and a source of alacrity. Though we expect expert theorycrafters to find ways to combine some of these roles. 
yeah so you're gonna get like scrapper for example can do quickness and healing um i mean you can probably uh, there are some healing builds you can come up with other stuff but easily i mean i mean ellie ellie alacri what was that alacri and ellie from is it from no elemental is quickness they're not giving alacri though no yeah are they no no, not... no 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 i can't i can't remember from the early specialization okay nice Sorry, I kind of reacted cool. as well. I was reading. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, it feels pretty straightforward. And I mean, it's building off of what they were already saying, that they're trying to add more of that in and sort of shake things up. I think the biggest thing from this for me is that the 10 target skills and traits in PvE are going to be max 5 cap. So that will change some things. Um, Might as and well. I think, yeah. Maybe. I guess. Sorry, I was reading the chat. Yeah. I mean, I hope so. Yeah. And, and raid squads, it'll definitely affect what people play. And I'm sure like Snow Crows and all them are going to figure out ways to, again, try to combine these rules because as they get split and from 10 to 5, that means there's even more you know, roles to fill, but you still only have 10 players. So it'll, I think it'll change it up. I think it would be good to have like the ability to not necessarily be like you are just a might dealer and you don't do you do some damage and that's it like if you can have a shout warrior that does heat like significant healing as well as putting out like banners or something like that I, I don't know hmm. I think it's we'll good. See. interesting topic on the warrior because that's kind of the next thing mm-hmm. who wants to read that one I can go really? for it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it was so sure. good to things. Thanks, crew. Okay. From who can to who can't. In Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons, only Warrior and Ranger lack the ability to fill those essential boon support roles. Since banners and spirits are unique effects, Warrior and Ranger break from the simple system of shared boons and conditions that allows professions to share common roles. While this creates certain unique group roles, like Banner Warrior, it also strongly limits play. Warrior players have been telling us for years that they'd like to be something other than a banner warrior in groups. We agree. And we're going to rework banners and spirits to fit our shared boon system and open new options for warrior and ranger players. Both professions will have access to new boon support roles using revamped banners, spirits, and related traits. Unfortunately, due to some time constraints and work on new elite specializations, we were unable to make these changes in time for Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons launch, and we're planning to make them part of a larger profession update and balance patch coming this summer. Until then, banners and spirits will remain as they are and continue to have a 10 target cap. Uh. <laughs> nice to know Still that need that druid. That's Still unfortunate. Need the warrior. <laughs> this is really interesting, and... They do seem to be going down the road of boon, or at least yes. having the groundwork for boons. But I feel like once the boons are ironed out mm -hmm. and there's more accessibility across classes, I hope we do see more unique systems like banners and spirits give unique effects rather than just boons. So uh, I don't know if they're getting rid of their unique effects to stats and just replacing them with boons. It seems like they might yeah. be doing that. Uh, Plus but I, specific icon uh, things, yeah. you know, like you know, the little icon you get above yes, your yes. Mm -hmm. utility bar as well. Starting to get rid of those a little bit more. Other than flat stats, I think that's fine. But Yeah, I, but I really do enjoy those class unique uh, mechanics and mm. augmentations. I think there is a, a potential for further elite specs to develop that a little bit. But I think it is smart to at least hit the boon category first to make sure that every class can at least provide boons rather than just unique yeah. effects i mean there's like as an example engineer so you can give pre extra precision or condition damage like stat wise if you go down firearms right like as one of the traits which i think is okay but i don't like a banner doing that like an actual like specific banner or an ability doing that like you know with the spirits because then it makes it that no one else can do that thing and you need you don't need that class right now i don't feel like but like to be really really effective you can't be like someone else can do that because they can bring the same thing it's like they've got this specific thing we need a banner warrior or we need like you know a druid because of this specific thing i like i like this change a lot actually yeah i mean we were literally just this week in our raid squad complaining again that why why do we need the druid because we have to have the druid like i mean yeah. there's things you i mean you don't necessarily have still i mean you can still 
do a raid and not have it oh, too, yeah, but yeah, to yeah, yeah. do it efficiently the way that you know statics tend to do it it's required and no one wants to do it <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he's good. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, sure there's people yeah, yeah. that love Druid, but... Oh, I like playing I, Druid. I, well, I mean, these two I do. used to. I, I play Druid as well. Until they changed spirits. I used Let's to love it Druid. until they changed the spirits, but I like that it sounds like they're trying to finally diversify that. Because, I mean, for the longest time, he's... If you were a Mesmer, you were Tank, that was it. No one else ever wanted to do it, so you were stuck. And so I like that they're starting to recognize that some of these things... I mean... When I joined the static I'm in now is like four or five years ago, I guess, that I was Druid and Druid is still a thing and that we have to have it, the way that yeah. we run our group. It's so it's going to be nice to expand on that. And same with like the Banner Warrior. Like if someone could still play War, maybe there's something else they can do. <laughs> well, they can, yeah. So throw down banners. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's so good. I, I, I like the, it'll be good. Okay. Anyone else want to make a comment, or should we continue to read the rest of it? There's not much left. Shall we just read through it? Yeah, let's continue. New equipment attribute combinations. You'll have two new equipment attribute combination options in Guild Wars 2 and of Dragons. Ritualist's equipment provides a large increase to condition damage and vitality, and a small increase to concentration and expertise. Dragon's equipment provides a large increase to power and ferocity, and a small increase to precision and vitality. These attribute combinations will be available as an option for all legendary equipment immediately on launch day, and you can earn equipment with these prefixes by playing expansion and content. We look forward to seeing what exciting new builds these attribute combinations enable across all our game modes. The path ahead. It may be called Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons, but this isn't an end. It's a beginning. As we look forward to 2022 and beyond, we're glad to have you with us on our continued journey together through Tyria. There's a lot to look forward to, and we can't wait to share more of what's still to come. That's a good ending. <laughs> Interesting. Two new stat combinations. I actually was just thinking about it this stream during the Jade Bot live stream. I was like, we haven't heard anything about a new stat combination. And then bam, two, two new ones. Ritualist stat feels a li little too close to Plague Doctor, maybe. It doesn't have healing power. But I always notice that we have never had a main stat condition damage and healing power. We still have yet to see that. So I do find it interesting that they would do condition damage vitality. So. Ah, that condition Maybe. damage healing power main stat evades <laughs> me once again. <laughs> Maybe somewhat inspired by Harbinger? I don't know. Mayhaps, mayhaps. Probably. Interesting, yeah. Why? Is... Ritualists in Guild Wars factions were healers as well. They were support and they did damage. Yeah. Did they do damage over time? I feel like it was a lot of flat damage stuff. I can't remember. I don't think so. Interesting. I hmm, okay. I don't remember. I played one. <laughs> I literally I, I just did recently uh, doing factions as well. But yeah, that's nice. It was a great, great post. And we got it during the show, so that was good. Great. Gave us some more stuff to talk about. That's what Even better. <laughs> okay. And going to the top, the virtuoso's gloves are the big chunky crystal ones. They, I just gotta say, the virtuoso Wait, has what? had like so many different variations to their concept art that I'm like, which one is it? What what is their elite spec Wait, armor is it gonna a different be? One? <laughs> yeah, the there's like one? a white. No, but there's another version with like a white magician glove, and there's one where her face is slightly different with a different facial expression. They really touched up the virtuoso's concept art quite a bit. <laughs> there's many different variations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. They've not done that with anyone else. Changes no. every time. Mirage. Actually, hold on. Oh, God, your face right now. It's just like the wonderment. <laughs> the wonderment of Kruf. Oh, they at all? Mm -hmm. I just noticed they actually did change the Harbinger's gloves to reflect the actual elite spec armor. The original concept art did not have the gloves on the Harbinger, but now they do. You're right. You are correct. I hadn't noticed that. Good catch. I love. I love getting these like little details. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. The detailer. 
<laughs> the Kroof the Detailer. <laughs> okay. Other than that, I think we're pretty much done. We covered a lot of ground today. That was a lot of stuff. That was too, that was a whole extra thing that I would not plan to do. <laughs> I mean, I think it answered a lot of questions. Like, like, I had questions, too, about are they going to add new stat attributes into the game? Because it's been a long time since we've had anything. So I, I'm glad they, that they put this out. Absolutely. A lot of good stuff. Don't think there's anything else from the live stream either that we need to add. So I think we're going to do a little bit of an outro and then we're going to be done. Look at that. Yay. There is technically only one guild chat left, I think. Yeah. Oh my god. Unless there isn't right. another what? one. There isn't there's another a one. There's a Monday Music. launch celebration. Is there? But that's yeah. There's a launch. We're all going to be playing game. it. We're probably well, all actually, gonna I'm going to be at school. You can play and watch at the same time. <laughs> True. I'm going to be at school though. <laughs> On that day, I'm like, I can't Aww. have the day. I can't take the day off. I just can't. I have to go. <sighs> God, I'll, I'll, I'll play for you, Jab Bro. You shall. <laughs> there we go. I shall I'm going to play in the morning. I actually don't know what time they're releasing it. That's a good question. Is it going to be launching 12 a.m.? Or is it going to be launching like um, 9 No, they'll do, it. they'll do it a.m. Like, because ain't it? Remember, it's Seattle. <laughs> it's like, but they might Heart release of Thorns. This at Heart of Thorns launched at midnight, if any of you recall. Uh, it did. Yeah, I don't it did. Are you sure? I, I remember. I remember staying up till twelve and playing the first story mission, and it was oh the nostalgia. Oh. <laughs> yeah, music next week. I'm trying to think how I would do that podcast. I mean, it's just going to be a watch along, I think, rather than a, a massive podcast afterwards. I think it would just be like uh, listen to the tunes and maybe listen to them during the stream and give our live opinions while we we get the songs and stuff, but. It might be a one last one before the release of just like a hype stream of like just I might get loads of people on and just have a get rid of this four cam window and just have loads of people on in the room just talking. That'd be funny. Actually, that could be a good idea. See who wants to come on. Uh, okay. We're done. Thank you very much. Episode 38. <laughs> Jade bot slash massive blog post, which kind of gave us information, <laughs> which is cool. Loads of information to be had. I hope everyone enjoyed the stream. Who is here live? We're going to do a little bit of an outro. One sassy cat is here and came and said hello to the podcast for the very first time. <laughs> and that time. was it. And <laughs> <That's all. laughs> bye bye. And he's here. It's very nice to have you here as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Do you want to tell us yes, a little thanks bit? Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but last minute as well. So I really appreciate that. Um, tell us about your channel, what you do, where you do it. There's no additional question. I already did the question right. at the beginning. <laughs> uh, See, so yeah, I'm one sassy cat. I do variety streaming, but I do um, Guild Wars 2 as my main game. I stream Monday, Tuesday, Friday, every Going to be doing a Saturday art stream in the morning. It's just kind of art and chill. So, nice. um, yeah, but I, I've been playing this game since Head Start, and I love everything about it. All all aspects of it. World versus P, PVE, story, raids, fractals. It's all great. <laughs> got the OGs in here. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh, too. Rook, you can still we'll accept you I, under our wing thank you, we'll just, thank you. If anyone it just asks, feels like Rook you have been I actually yeah. completely Rook forget like the lore your lore streams yeah. or when you open the stream that was Yay. great I was like oh, I learned everything iconic <laughs> that iconic moment that was so I still, I still sometimes think back on that and I'm like oh my gosh I actually did that that happened <laughs> I mean, everybody afterwards too that was just like there's no way that was live and then there's like cut to me sitting in front of the camera day of like half asleep because i'd been up until like i don't even know 4 a.m working on the final touches and I'm like i still yeah, don't believe i can't work. believe that was that a live awesome. thing and they were like do, I mean, did they give you a choice well actually we're doing the outro but did they give you a choice to do that live or not i want to know <laughs> or is it like could you record it like because you could have recorded it there maybe I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's. I, I bet it gave it, you like the adrenaline I, was pretty cool, though. I mean, yeah, oh. they, 
they I asked out. They asked for it to be live. Um, wow. wow. So, <laughs> but I mean, I could have probably Whoa. said, you know, I probably could have oh. been like, Ooh. could I record it? But they asked for it to be live. So I was like, so I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. And it was wild. But I'm I would have probably recorded it. a video and then like, did like the, the camera video. feed to my Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can do that. I'm live. Oh I should my have. Gosh. I mean, it just, it works out because I have a theater background. So like, yeah. I just treated it like a performance. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. But like literally yeah. for like days before, because it had to be second perfect as well. They they wanted it to be within an exact time frame. So um, I was practicing to the second, timing every single section and like making notes like you know it needs to be faster here if i you know in the moment spend too much time on something i can cut these lines so i'll i'll have those to cut um and i had a timer up the whole time i was doing it to make sure that i was hitting each of the timing benchmarks <laughs> Whoa. Incredible. <laughs> it was intense. Good job. I, don't know, I still had to cut some stuff at the end because you know things just take a little bit longer when you're live um you read the audience you respond to stuff so yeah it was wild it was wild well, tell us where you do all of that stuff. Hi, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where's your script Rick. now? <laughs> um, I got off the floor and now I'm here and you can find me on twitch.tv oh. Rookery. <laughs> R-O-O-K-U-R-I. Um, you can also find me on YouTube now at Rookery, and I've been doing some content and some additional lore stuff and some creative things like character cosplay music videos and all sorts of stuff. So if you're curious, you can check that out. Um, you can find me on Twitter is the only place that's different. It's Rookery underscore. Uh, and I have it on good authority that Boots has also joined the underscore yes. squad. Uh, Kroof and I underscores now Boots as well. Mm. So I think, uh, you know, Sassy Jebro, you might want to get in on this. And you can no. the if you you don't have an underscore <laughs> you're not relevant exactly i had to put a d oh. i'm the one sassy cat should i tell you what oh. i did i actually went through all of my youtubes and added um an underscore to Kroof's things i thought i'd put their twitch in the description but i'd actually put their youtube in so now you've got the wrong youtube address so i have to go oh. back and take it out <laughs> i'm like spent Yay. so much time to make sure everyone's links are good so i'm a good person but also at the same time damn me <laughs> straight to hell um, um but yes if you're curious about that 40 minute summary of the entire guild wars 2 story that i did for the uh l first look live stream you can find that on my youtube and yeah we do a lot of content for mmos uh like i said i'm always about having good discussions good connections and building safe spaces that are inclusive and diverse and always a really good time hopefully fun hopefully most of the time fun uh <laughs> hopefully I think someone will say fun I'm, in the I chat i think i'm funny sometimes um <laughs> Yeah. But sure. we have a good time no matter what, and we enjoy the games that we play, so everybody's always welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Um, <laughs> so cool. Thank you again for being on as well, Rook. Proof. Who? Sorry, I'm a Jade bot today. <laughs> do your best, Nash. No, You'll definitely do that for us. You do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do what, Jeb, bro? Nothing. Ask the question. Ask the question. Live in your truth. I, I want you to live my truth. I will live my truth right now. Do your best bot impression as you sell yourself. <laughs> oh, you suck at that. Isn't... Just say so. Oh! <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm a little sad now. I'm a little sad. I thought sad, you say I'm a little teapot. <laughs> I'm a little teapot, short and short. No, Here that's not the song. Here is my face. Here. <laughs> Is my eyes. Um, hi everyone. <laughs> I'm crew. I do a lot of YouTube stuff. I do some Guild Wars 2 stuff, but I'm also kind of venturing into some lost art because that's also an MMO that just released. I'm having a fun time oh, with there. Ask you about that. Yeah. Oh yes, you should. But um Twitch, Planet. I also stream here Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and sometimes Saturdays for doing some raids. Ooh. And um I need to go find my other eyelash. I really don't know you where You could maybe it went. even play with Kroof as uh, they <laughs> join groups that consistently leave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow, that feels incredibly pointed. Um, hey, Kroof, I, I mean, have a question for you. Would you like? <laughs> would you like to join our raid group? Oh, your raid group? There you go. Do yeah. it. 
Do it. It's far superior than anyone else's raker, but mostly Jabro's raker. Would you like I to join? We him? don't. Have, I, my raker Ooh, doesn't exist. That's, so that's really me. <laughs> we do three rake groups a week. I'll find you an extra eyelash. We'll get you covered. We'll get you in yeah, there. Yeah, I'll, I'll oh. happily join your raids. I've loved raiding. Oh. Absolutely. Oh, sure. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Great. 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 Continue. Fine. Sorry. Fine. I'm not invited anymore. I get it. That's fine. I'll just leave. <laughs> anyway, everyone's fired. Great. <laughs> no, we actually... had a good stream if we got fired, y'all. We did it's good. True. We nailed it. That's we made true. it laugh back then. Jeb, so... I did actually have a lot of fun raiding with you. No, you didn't. <laughs> you're, you're lying. I I'm so deeply upset. I'm emotional and upset. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound like a Jade bot? <laughs> I'm emotional and upset. Well, that was a very poor impression of a Jade bot. I'm just saying. <laughs> Why are you so mean about Cruz and Jade Because I'm being mean to everyone now because my feelings have hurt. Been hurt. Jebro, I've only got one I feeling. I loved raiding with you. I loved raiding with you. It was so fun. Thank you for joining us. We laughed really hard that night. Such good memories. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Everyone, thanks so much for watching the Lightbringers Guild Wars 2 podcast. I was going to say, half a game was I going to say that. Um, <laughs> anyway, if you want to watch the podcast live Fridays, 12 p.m. Pacific, come watch it. We've only got a couple more. The end of Dragons Guild Wars 2 expansion is almost here. It's not long, people. Two and a bit weeks. It is two and a bit weeks, isn't it? Yes. Two and a bit weeks and we're playing. We're in Camphor. We got the things. I'm excited. Thank you to my guests for coming out today and joining us. Very much appreciate it. You take a lot of time out of your day. I always appreciate it. Twitch.tv slash Jebro Unity. Same on Instagram. Same on Facebook. Jebro Uni. Just look for it. Anchor, everything else. Um, I was on the website the other day in terms of gaming podcasts and out of 2 million, 700 and something else, we're on the five, top 5% 5 of like this whole website. And that it's pretty ridiculous how many people actually listen to this. I didn't realize myself, apparently it's quite good. So that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and fun's up. So tell your friends about it. If they want to get excited about End of Dragons, if you do as well, there's loads of episodes freely available. Anchor.fm slash Uni. Always awesome. Always epic guests. Again, thank you very much. Go and check out everyone's stuff in the description, wherever you are. We'll see you next time on the Lightbringers podcast. We'll be looking and listening. Well, listening. You don't look at music. I mean, you can. The, the waves, I guess. But we're listening to... I can't remember what Ruby <laughs> called him. Jebra, you know there is such a thing as sheet music, right? Which is like written I mean, yeah, but like we can't <laughs> look at the we can't look at the music. What are we gonna do? Look at the music? Are we gonna look at the sheet music? I mean, no. Maybe you know what I mean. Like, I, don't feel, I got a music I, degree. Hello, I was a that. bass player in a band for years. I know what sheet music is. God damn. <laughs> I can. Play I used to play recorder. Yeah, see. <laughs> I really oh, like your piano. Oh my God. I like your forehead mustache, Karoof. That's a good look. Did you even not know that we were still on? <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I was gonna put it down. No, not good. Thank yeah, you. probably good choice. Probably good choice. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Before something else ends up on Cruise Face, I will see you next time as well as our guests on the Lightbringers podcast, episode 39 next week. Come just watch us live doing the things. Bye.